Good morning. We're on the record. This is volume one in the videotape deposition of Deanna S. Brady in the matter of State of Washington versus LLR Incorporated et al. Cause number 19-2-02325-2 SEA for the Superior Court of the State of Washington, King County, as noticed by the plaintiffs. The time is approximately now 9.04 a.m. on December 20th, 2019, and we are convening at 5020 Campus Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. My name is Craig Ellingson from Buell Real-Time Reporting, LLC, located at 1325 4th Avenue, Suite 1840, Seattle, Washington, 98101. Will counsel and all present please identify themselves for the record? Brina Roos for the State of Washington, and here with me is my colleague Joe Kanata and my colleague Tiffany Lee is on the phone. And Anthony Todaro from DLA Piper appearing for the witness and all defendants. Will the court reporter please swear in the witness? Could you raise your right hand, please? You do solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you shall give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Can you please state your full name? Deanne Startup Brady. And uh, your legal name is Deanne Brady? It is. And do you sometimes go by Deanne Stidham? Yes. What, what would you prefer to um, I call you today? Brady's easier, okay. I guess. Okay. But if you say Stidham, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Have you been deposed before? Yes. How many times? Once. So, um, you may recall this from your previous deposition, but I'm going to just go through some of the ground rules for the deposition to make sure we have a smooth day here today. Um, I'm here to ask you today um, questions about a lawsuit uh, brought by the state of Washington. Um, do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, we have a videographer who's recording our proceedings today. We also have a court reporter who's transcribing all of my questions and your answers. So there's a few things that are important for the court reporter to be able to get a clear record um, and record our proceedings accurately. Um, first, we should try not to talk over each other. So I will try to uh, wait until you're finished answering a question to ask a new question. And if you could wait until I'm done with the question to answer it, um, that, that would be helpful. Um, we want to make sure all our answers are audible. So if, um, you know, in a normal conversation, we might nod our head or say, uh-huh. Those are hard for the court reporter to transcribe. So we want to make sure we say a yes or a no or audible answers. <clears throat> um, please let me know if you don't understand any of my questions. Um, I'd be happy to rephrase them if any of my questions are confusing. If you answer a question, I'll assume that you did understand it. Does, does that sound fair? Yes. OK. Um, We'll be able to take breaks throughout the day. If you need a break, let me know. Um, if I have a question pending, unless there's a question about whether your answer would impose on attorney-client privilege, I'll ask that you answer that question. But um, otherwise, we can take a break um, if, if you need it. You mentioned you have um, some back pain. So if you need to take a break for that, um, happy to do so. OK. Um, do you understand all of those instructions? I do. OK. And you understand you're under oath today? Yes. Do you, do you know of any reason you can't give complete and accurate testimony today? No. Are you currently uh, taking any medications that would impair your ability to give accurate testimony? No. Okay. What did you do to prepare for today's deposition? I spoke with my attorneys. And without telling me what you, what you spoke about, who, who was there in that meeting? Anthony. And I apologize, I don't know his full last name. I just okay. call him That's Anthony. <laughs> and then um, our inside legal is Bill Florados. Did you talk about uh, today's deposition with anyone else? No. <clears throat> did you review any documents? Yes. About how many documents did you review? That I remember, maybe two or three. Uh, did you review others that you don't remember? I don't recall. Did you re review any videos? Maybe one or two. When did you meet with your attorneys to prepare for today? I don't recall the exact date. About how long ago was About it? About a week ago. And how long was that meeting? 
couple of hours. Are you currently employed? Yes. Um, with what company? Lula Rowe. And which legal entity employs you? Check to the phone. I don't understand. Is it uh, LLR Inc. that employs you? I am not sure. What's your title with Lula Rowe? It varies, but I think I am president of the company with my husband, Mark Stidham. So co-president? Yes. Are you also co-CEO? I don't know. And have you been uh, co-president with your husband since the company was founded? Yes. Have you had any other titles since the company was founded? I am sure I have. I don't know all of them. I'm not big on titles. What are your responsibilities with LuLaRoe? I like to work with the retailers. I enjoy being able to give them advice and encourage those that need encouraging. And I work on designing products so that they fit a female's body properly. And I work on sizing and seeking out ways to find better products, fabrics. Have those always been your responsibilities? Yes. Have you ever had any other responsibilities with the company? I am sure I have, but I don't know specifically. How are you currently compensated? I don't know. Do you receive a paycheck? Yes. And what is your uh, is um, what is your salary? I don't know. Do you receive any bonuses? No. Do you personally sell um, any of the Lularo clothing? No. Where is your office? What is my office? Where is your office? It's in Corona. And what's the address of the building? I don't know. <laughs> uh, in fact, yesterday somebody asked me the address and I had to walk in and ask someone, what is the address here? So, Do you know what street it's on? It's on, t they, it's Temescal Canyon Road. And you have a physical office in that building? Yes. And what's in your, your physical office? A couch, pictures on the walls of my grandchildren and family, my desk, a computer. <clears throat> Is the computer a desktop or a laptop? Desk. Do you have a laptop? No. Do you keep any paper files in your office? Not that I know of. Do you have an office phone? Yes. Do you have an assistant? Yes. And who's your assistant? His name is Jonathan. What's his last name? Parr. And what are uh, Jonathan's responsibilities? <clears throat> To run errands for me. Personal errands? Yes. Does he have any responsibilities with respect to Lularo? No. Not that I know of. Do you have any other assistants? No. Mm -hmm. 
Um, who at the company reports to you? I would say just Jonathan. Do you use an email account? Yes. Um, and what is your LulaRoe email address? Do you use any personal email addresses for LulaRoe business? No. Is anyone um, other than you authorized to use your LulaRoe email account? Not that I know of. Does anyone else have the password? No. Do you have a cell phone that you use for LulaRoe business? It's my personal cell phone. Do you use it to communicate with retailers? Yes. <clears throat> and wh what's the phone number for that? Is that the only cell phone you have? Yes. <clears throat> Do you use social media? Yes. What types of social media do you use? Instagram. And under what name is your Instagram account? Do you use Facebook? No. I click on it because it's connected, but I don't go on Facebook. What do you mean you click on it? Well, it says, where else would you like to share? And so I figure it's two places at the same time. So I link it to Facebook. So when I post it, it goes there too, I would assume. I don't know because I don't do Facebook. But you do have a Facebook. Uh, do you use Twitter? No. Nope. Uh, Vimeo? No. Nope. Periscope? No. Nope. Have you ever used Periscope? I think years ago when they first came out with it, <clears throat> Do you still have a Periscope account? I have no idea. Do you use any other social media? No. What's your typical work week? Do you work Monday through Friday? Yes. What hours? Just depends on when I get there and when I leave to go home. What's a tip, what are your typical hours? Like 10, between 10 and 11, and between 4 and 5. <clears throat> what do you do in a typical day? Oh, there's not a typical day. It just depends on what I need and who needs me. Who are the people who most often need you? Maybe Mark, one of my kids. And what types of things do they ask you to do? <coughs> Mom, are you coming to the dance recital? What should I buy Dad for Christmas? What about um, LulaRoe related things? No. No, okay. In a typical work day, how much time do you spend on email? Oh, maybe three minutes. So not much time? No. What about social media? Mm, I would say the same. In a typical work day, how much time do you spend on the phone? Maybe an hour. And is that on um, talking on the phone or texting? Could be both. And then how much time do you spend in meetings in a typical day? Just depends on the day. Maybe an hour, maybe maximum two. In a typical day, how, how much time do you spend in your office versus other locations? Maybe four to six hours. In your office? Yes. So what are you doing um, 
during that time when you're not on email, social media, or on the phone? Talking to the employees, talking about what they're doing in their photographing, having conversations with various departments while they're there, answering their questions. You said what they're doing in their photographing. Is that photographing of the Lulura yes. clothes? And what departments do you interact with the most? I would say sales and marketing and styling. That's pretty much it. Who do you interact with from sales and marketing? Uh, my son, Kenny. And his supervisor is, I don't even know who he reports to. I have no idea. Is there someone else from sales and marketing that you interact with other than Kenny? No. And who do you interact with most um, from styling? There's a whole team. So it's various people. And who are those people? Mm, one girl's name is Megan. And Caitlin. I don't even know Caitlin's last name. Uh, Tish. And some of the girls that work underneath her, they'll come up and ask me questions. But usually it's like twice a month. And under, under the, other than those folks from Styling and Kenny, um, who else uh, who works for Lularo do you regularly interact with? Not very many. I'm going to assume Mark's in the group. No. Oh. You don't interact with Mark? Uh-uh. Not unless he happens to show up upstairs in my office area, but... Does he work in the same location as no. you? No. Sorry. When you do, um, do work on your comp computer, where do you store files? I don't work on my computer very often. Do you ever? Rarely. <clears throat> when you do, where, where do you store files? I have no idea. Do you ever work from home? Rarely. When you do, where do you work from? Probably in my bed. Do you have an office at home? No. Do you have a laptop at home? No. So when you work from home, is that on your phone? Yes. And that's the same phone number you mentioned earlier? Yes. Okay. You said earlier that you have been deposed before. In what case was that? With uh, my dyer. And how long ago was that deposition? I don't know, maybe four or five months ago. Have you ever testified in court? No. What is Lula Rose business? It's pretty broad. That's a broad question. Uh, well, how would you describe it? I would describe it as a business opportunity for men and women to be able to work at their own hours <coughs> and also 
keep the career that they have or they can work their business from home. And when you say um, work their own business, what, what type of business is that? They buy clothing and they sell it. They resell it. And LuLaRoe ma manufactures those clothes? Yes. What type of clothes? Shirts, tops, skirts, dresses, duster vests, long cardigans, short cardigans, denim jackets, denim jeans, I mean. All women's clothes? Yes. Well, no. No, we have a, a few, a handful of men's styles. Do you have any children's styles? Not anymore. You did at one point? Yes, we did. When did you first start selling clothing under the brand name Blue LaRoe? May 2013. And at that time you were personally selling? Yes. And they were maxi cigarettes, I understand. Yes. When did you start asking others to sell LuLaRoe clothing for you? I'm just to the farm. I never asked anyone. Um, at some point, uh, you had others selling LuLaRoe, correct? Yes. When did that start? I would say November 2013. And how did you go about um, having others sell the clothing? I just mentioned it when they said they would like to sell also and be able to make some money from home and be able to stay at home with their children. And then I told them, why don't you sell LuLaRoe? And at that time, did you set up um, sort of a territorial, territory-based system? Not me. Who set that up? I don't know. Was there a territory-based system? I think so, in the beginning. So under that system, someone would be assigned a particular territory and that, that would be their responsibility? They would decide. We never decided. Would um, the territories overlap at all? I couldn't answer that question. And who set up that structure? Nobody did. How did it develop then? They asked if they could have, if I, let's say one of our first retailers were from southern Utah and they asked if I take care of this area, would that be okay? I said, sure. At that time, did you have a contract with the retailers? I believe so, but I did not ever see them. Who handled the contract? I don't know. Did Mark handle the contract? I don't know. And at some point, did that structure change? Which structure? Uh, the territory structure. Well, because they invited their friends, because the friends saw what they were doing and wanted to be a part of it, and it became more natural to invite their neighbors and let them be a part of it also. That's my understanding. There was no formality. I understand currently there's different ranks of, well, let me, let me back up. You, you, you've mentioned retailers. Are you referring to independent fashion retailers? Yes. Okay. And um, at, some, at some point earlier on, they were also called fashion consultants, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you recall when that changed? No. Do you recall why? No. Who changed the name? I don't recall. Okay. 
and there's currently various different ranks of the retailers, correct? Yes. So there's sponsors, trainers, coach, mentors? Yes. When did those ranks develop? I don't recall. <clears throat> Uh, do you recall when uh, LuLaRoe LL Art Inc. was founded? No. Do you recall how long after you started selling skirts that those ranks developed? No. Who developed the ranks? Mark and I. Why did you develop the ranks? To give them certain responsibilities. So what is a sponsor? Someone, uh, IFR, that signs up another person to help them and guide them in their business. And the person they signed up would be referred to as their downline? Yes. Can any IFR become a sponsor? Yes. Has that always been the case? Yes. <coughs> and what is a trainer? A trainer is someone that trains a group of sponsors that are underneath them. How does one become a trainer? By choosing to oversee. I believe they have three sponsors and that becomes their group underneath them so that they can then start training them. So uh, a trainer has three retailers in their downline? <clears throat> yes. Uh, object, I think you meant sponsors. They could have more retailers. Yes, they can have more retailers. Oh, but they have three sponsors? Yes. Okay, got it. And what is a coach? Someone that coaches trainers and sponsors. How does one become a coach? To be honest, I don't know. Do they need to have a certain number of trainers underneath them? Yes. You don't know the number? No. Has that number varied over time? No. And what is a mentor? <clears throat> I do know a mentor it has three coaches and three trainers. And they are to mentor those fashion retailers underneath them. Do retailers have any uh, expectations to maintain their status with LuLaRoe? I do not know. Do they have to uh, meet any minimum ordering? I believe they do, but I don't know the exact. Has that changed over time? I don't remember. Is it is the minimum ordering the same for every rank? I don't know. How many retailers does Lulu currently have? I do not know. Do you know a ballpark? Do you know how many mentors there currently are? Over 40. 
Do you, do you know how many coaches there currently are? No. At one point, um, I believe there's a rink called Leader. Does that sound familiar? No. Uh, I've heard of something called teams of retailers. Do you know what that is? People that have groups of retailers underneath them, I would assume. <clears throat> so a uh, team is sometimes used to refer to someone's downline? Yes. Some retailers name their teams, is that right? I don't know. Have you ever heard of retailers naming their teams? I'm sure I've heard them, but we don't take in we don't take any part in that. For example, I've heard of the team Lula Lovelies. Have you heard of that? Mm -mm. So, uh, does Lula Rose set any requirements to call to call somewhat something a team? No. Um, is it possible to buy clothes directly from LuLaRoe? If you are a retailer. So if I wanted to buy some clothes just for my own personal use, I would have to become a retailer to buy it directly from LuLaRoe? Yes. Why is LuLaRoe set up like that? I Check don't to the know. Form. You don't know? As the president, you don't know? Check to the form. The question's vague. Why doesn't LuLaRoe sell directly to consumers? I don't know. As the president, you don't know why LuLaRoe doesn't sell directly to consumers? No. <clears throat> How does someone become a retailer? They would either reach out to the person that they are interested in becoming a part of their group and reach out to them. So the sponsor? Yes. So to become a retailer you must be sponsored by a current re retailer? Yes. become a retailer, uh, does one have to make an initial investment in inventory? Yes. And what is that investment? $499 for 65 pieces. And I understand that investment has changed over time? Yes. When did it last change? End of October. What was it before that? <coughs> don't recall because there was a change and I don't know when it was. <clears throat> Do you recall why, that, why it changed? Uh, because you no longer needed as much inventory because people were not doing in-home pop-ups the way it was originally designed and people are able to be way more efficient selling live on their preferred platforms. So let me uh, make sure we're on the same page with some of those terms. What, what is a pop-up? Well, that's not a term I ever used, but when I did pop-ups, when I did parties, I called them skirt parties. Um, you would take your merchandise and plan a party with a, a friend or a referral and you would take your merchandise set up racks and uh, they would invite their friends and then you would hold a, a sale meaning people could come and buy merchandise and take it home so no catalog no ordering so, so then oh, go ahead. then over time it changed because people were way more efficient 
and they could then found out uh, about instant, you know, doing live sales. Um, so going back to the, to the pops of pop ups, is it fair to say a pop up is sort of a temporary sale in someone's home or some other location that's sort of temporary, a certain set amount of time, where you'll be there selling clothes? Yes. Okay. Um, that's what you said, like a party. Yes. Okay. And then you say selling live. What is that? I don't know exactly, but I can guess because I've never done it before. Um, when you say selling live, are you referring to selling on a, a some sort of social media platform? Yes. Okay. Such as Facebook Live? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> when uh, someone becomes a retailer and makes that an initial investment in inventory um, and gets those 65 pieces or sometime in the past it was more, um, do they get anything else from LuLaRoe with that package? No. Have they ever um, received any sort of onboarding kit with any physical materials to help use in sales? In the very beginning, yes. What was in that? I don't know exactly, but I think there were fabric swatches and sizing clips that goes that go on the racks, and some maybe information to help them get ideas on how to improve their business. And what format would that information be? It uh, it came in a box. Like a pamphlet or a binder of material? Yes. Did they ever get any uh, written flyers or materials to hand out to customers or um, potential people they wanted to sponsor? They created them themselves and Maybe they reached out to LuLaRoe. I have no idea. <coughs> and at one point, I understand there was a consignment program if you wanted to sign up? Yes. How did that work? In the beginning, we had women that couldn't get started. There was no financial ability to get started, so we helped them out by letting them have product and and they paid us back within a very short period of time. I think it was, they, they most often would do it anywhere as a week after they got their merchandise. So they would op most often pay it off within a week? Oh, well, a lot of them did. Some of them took longer. When did LuLaRoe get rid of the consignment program? I don't know. Why did they get rid of it? I think it's because people were not as honest as we hoped them to be. What do you mean by that? They didn't pay. They didn't pay the company back? Right. Is what I understand. How many people didn't pay the company back? I have no idea. Was it a large portion? No. Is there a waiting period to become a retailer? Now? Yeah. No, but I understand there's a process for them to go through, to watch videos and talk to their sponsor and make sure they have all the information before they get their first initial order. What, what videos do they watch? I have no idea. Who develops those videos? 
I would assume our video team. Who's on the video team? There's a group of them and I don't know all their names. <clears throat> Who's in charge of the video team? I don't know. Do you know the name of anyone on the video team? Well, it was Mikey, but he's gone. Mikey who? I don't know. I don't have contact with that department. Who's responsible for that department? It varies. I have no idea who's in charge now. Um, you mentioned watching videos and talking to the sponsor. Is there anything else involved in the current process for becoming an IFR? I do not know. <coughs> They said the pink drink is amazing. I don't know. I'm not a, I don't drink coffee, so. You did? <laughs> oh my gosh. I did that. Well, you asked. Can I take my jacket off? Sorry, it's that part of moving yeah. around. I cross my arms because it feels comfortable to open up my back. Yeah. I found a, a Mimi in the back of my car. <laughs> Old little poncho. Okay. So we are talking about that process of signing up to become an IFR. How long does that process take? It all depends on their ability and their desire. Some people, I understand, can do it quickly. And some are more methodically. At one point, was there a waiting period to become an IFR? I believe so. And that was referred to as the queue? Yes. When, when did that first start, the development of the queue? I could not tell you. Is there no longer a queue? Not, the, not that I know of. Uh, when when did sort of the process of having a queue stop? I think they, I, I can't answer. I don't know. Was it years ago, months ago? Mm, I would say well over a year ago. And why did it stop? I don't know. Do you, do you know how long a period of time there was a queue? No. When there was a queue, how, how long was that queue in terms of a waiting period for an IFR? Check to the form. I don't know. Did you ever hear how long the wait was? I'm sure I did, but I don't remember exact. When there was a queue, how many uh, retailers would LuLaRoe on board in a day? I have no idea. Why was there a queue? I have no idea. Who, who, who decided that there should be a queue? I don't think that I have any idea who that is. Was it Mark? No. Um, how are retailers compensated? They buy wholesale and they sell retail. That's the number one. Do they also and if they have a team. And if they have a team, how are they compensated? Uh, there's a percentage. What do you mean there's a percentage? They get a percentage off of their sales. A percentage of the sales of their team? Nope, their personal sales. Um, 
And that's referred to as their leadership bonus? Yes. So the leadership bonus is based on a percentage of a person's individual sales? Yes. Have you ever heard of, a, of the leadership pool? No. Well, I've heard of it, but I have no idea what it is, the percentages, I don't know the details. When retailers have questions about the leadership pool, who do they go to? Object to the form, foundation. I don't know. <clears throat> do retailers ever ask you questions about the leadership pool? Not that I know of. They know I'm not going to answer them, so. How do you know that they know? Because when answer. they've asked, I say I don't know. Uh, the bonus, um, you said it's a percentage of, a person, of personal sales? Yes. And how is that calculated? I have only heard of the frontline direct sponsors get 5% of their sponsors that sell a certain amount, and I don't know what that amount is. So they get 5% of the sales of the people that they've sponsored? Yes, so Personal, that they personally sponsored. So when you say personal sales, you mean pers the people they personally sponsor? Yes. Okay. And how are those sales calculated? I don't know. Are they based um, off of retail sales or wholesale sales? Retail. No, no. I'm not going to answer that. I don't know no. that answer. I'll just add an objection big as to time. I think she's asking about now, but I'm not certain. I am currently asking now. I don't know. You don't know how I they're don't calculated? Know. Mm -mm. At one point, were they calculated off of wholesale sales? I think sales? it's, I would assume it's wholesale, because we don't know what they, sometimes they, I would hope that they give mom items or an auntie, and I have no idea what they do. So you don't have any way to track retail sales? Me personally, I'm sure I do, but I don't look at it. I don't, I don't have a clue how to look at it and dissect it. And you said you assume that the bonus is based on wholesale sales? Check to the form in the States. Okay. I would assume, I don't know. <clears throat> Whose idea was it to have the sort of leadership bonus program? Mark. Why was it created? Because I was overwhelmed. What do you mean? I couldn't do it all. I was training and I just, I was so overwhelmed. You were training retailers? Yes. And how did the leadership bonus program help that? Well, my thought was that if they were going to help me and eliminate the stress off of my shoulders, that they would do all the training from what I was training <clears throat> them. Do you know? It's kind of like that. Pay it forward. And we thought it would be nice to give them a little bit extra so that they could take that stress off of my shoulders. Do you recall when the program was created? No. Was it years ago? Yes.
um, do, uh, we were talking earlier about the, the territorial based system when you first started um, having others sell LuLaRoe clothing. Was there um, any sort of uh, commission based compensation under that system? No. How were retailers compensated then? I would assume the way they are compensated today. With the leadership bonus? Yes. Do retailers um, receive any sort of commission for bringing on more um, people in their downline? No. what's been marked as Exhibit 102. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a moment to take a look at that. So for the record, this is LOR-WA-00007938. Um, which is an email as well as an attachment, which is Bates number 7939. Have you seen this email before? I don't recall. It looks like if you look at the top, it's an email dated June 13th, 2016 from Terrell Transtrom to uh, a number of people, including um, Deanne Stidham. Is that you? Yes. So your uh, email, at LuLaRoe email address shows up as Deanne Stidham? I don't know. Okay. Um, and it, it looks to be an email from Terrell Transform and he addresses it Deanne, and that is you? Yes. And you don't recall getting this, this email? I get a lot of emails. Who is Terrell Transform? He was a gentleman that came in to help us get organized. What do you mean get organized? I don't, he had some experience is my understanding in the direct selling industry. Do you recall when he was hired? No. Was he hired directly or was he a contractor? I do not know that. Was he engaged through any sort of company? Not that I know of. Have you ever heard of ServiceQuest? I've heard of it. Um, was he associated with ServiceQuest? I don't know exactly. And in this email, he says, I can imagine the big challenge ahead for Martha to learn everybody's faces and names. Do you know, know who Martha is? Yes. Who is Martha? She is a woman that had some experience 20 years prior and was, I knew she was a woman that was good with people and efficient and understood this type of business. I. I think. I mean, she's... What's Martha's last name? Hafen. And was she taking over some sort of role in the company? Just inside the business. Mm -hmm. And then... What was her role? I don't... I don't think she had a role. She moves around. You could turn to uh, the page, let's see, first the page that ends in the Bates number 7940 at the bottom, mm -hmm. which looks to be um, a document called Consultant Support Organization Chart, June 13th, 2016. And you can flip to the next page, Bates numbered 7941, there's an org chart. Have you seen this before? No. Um, at the top it says Deanne Sidham, President, Consultant Support. Do you know what that means? I am supporting the consultants. We spoke earlier about your role. Is that another term for your role? Yes, could be. I'm what? not big on names or titles, I meant. And then underneath it, it, it shows a number of people. The first, it says open vacancy call center. Do you know what that refers to? No. Does LuLaRoe have a call center? 
for data yes. in 2016? We, yes. What does the call center do? I have no idea. They answer calls. Calls from who? Various people, from computer support to, do you want to buy more paper? We can set up a copy machine for you. We can get you an ice machine. I would assume they're just the people that answer the phones. Do they answer the phones from uh, retailers? I do not know. The next line is, uh, I think it says Bree Spillman. Who is Bree Spillman? She's just a girl that was working for us. It says help desk and analytics. Was that her role in 2016? Well, to be honest with you, I know nothing about this page, and I don't know what Terrell was putting together. That's what he took on himself. Do you, d does that sound right that she was working on help desk and analytics? I have no idea. I was not on her calls. I did not pay attention. Did she ever report to you? No. Who is Alexis uh, Geelin? The next, the next. Uh, yes, she does work for us. What is her role? It's not that. It's not training and development? No. Did she ever have a role in training and development? I have no idea. Honestly, I don't. To be, I don't know what they all did. That was under, that, like you said, it would be under Terrell. He took on things that made decisions. What type of uh, decisions did Terrell make? I do not know exactly, but he's no longer with us. When he was with you, what kind of decisions was he making? Well, he made decisions without approvals. I do know that because people got hired. Oh, sorry, I touched that. I didn't mean to. Um, he made decisions that and hired people. I remembered that, but I don't know exactly. You know, I just... I let people do what they do. What decisions do you recall him making without approval? I don't know. You said he hired people without approval? Well, I remember him giving Bree and some of Bree and Megan Alvarez um, salaries that Mark and I did not approve on. Uh, why didn't you approve those salaries? He just did it without our approval. Hired them. They were quite high salaries, but we didn't have an HR person in the, at the time. Do you recall any other uh, uh, decisions that Terrell made without your approval? I don't recall exacts. <clears throat> What um, areas was he hired to consult on? I honestly don't know. Was consultant support one of the areas he was hired to help with? I recall, yes. How long did uh, he work for the company? Two years, maybe? I don't know. And when did that relationship end? I have no idea when. Why did he stop working for the company? I, I don't know exactly. Whose decision was it? It was probably a decision from other people, not myself. I don't know. Was it Terrell's decision? No. Was it Mark's decision? I don't know. I can't speak for Mark. We were talking about consultant, 
consultant support, and you said that could be another term for your role with the company. In what ways does LuLaRoe support its consultants? I would think those videos that they put together, they've received information and suggestions from other IFRs to get ideas on what we can do to show support. What, what are those suggestions? I don't know. How does LuLaRoe receive suggestions from the, its retailers? I would think they could email and they can call in. Do retailers ever give you suggestions directly? I'm sure they do. What suggestions have you received directly? I don't remember. You mentioned videos. Are there any other ways that LuLaRoe currently provides trainings to retailers or prospective retailers? Uh, we do trainings in out in various cities where they come together and can learn from each other. <coughs> any other ways that LuLaRoe puts on trainings? Um, they have a leadership training for people that would like to improve their businesses. Improve businesses by building their downline? Coming together, getting inspiration, learning how-tos from each other. What kind of how-tos? I don't know. Any how to be more efficient, how to better time management, how to get more out of your assistant, nanny, I don't know, how to do your dishes faster. <coughs> Any other ways that LuLaRoe currently provides training? We do a convention once a year. Does the location of that convention change? Yes. Well, no, it hasn't. Where is it located? Right now it's in Southern California. When is it usually held? July. Any other ways that LuLaRoe currently provides training? That's it. Um, we have, I forgot, we have weekly, weekly calls. Weekly calls for IFRs? Yes. <clears throat> is that for all IFRs regardless of rank? Yes. Probably at a good spot for a break. Take, take a few minutes. Okay. That'd be off the record, the time back. is 10 07 a.m. I take this off. Going back on the record, the time is 10 21 a.m. Have you heard the term multi level marketing? Yes. And what does the term mean? It, to me, I felt it means uh, selling a nutritional product to other people and inviting them to be on an auto ship program where they get product every month automatically. Is it limited to nutritional products? To my knowledge, I don't know any other way. Other, I don't know. I'm not involved in other companies. Have you ever been involved in a multi-level marketing company? Yes. What multi-level marketing? I tried to do Amway and Pharmanex. Oh, I'm sure there's several others that I... Oh, I did. Uh, it was with a company called Eola, which is aloe spelled backwards, E-O-L-A. But they're no longer around. Let's uh, talk about Amway. When did you do Amway? Oh, don't ask me that. I was probably in my 20s. <clears throat> How long did you do it for? I probably a year too long. A year too long? Yeah, well, because we had so much product still in our garage, it just kept coming. 
Did you do it longer than a year? I don't recall. How did you get involved with Amway? Oh, my sister. She was an Amway distributor? Yes. Did you sign up any distributors? I don't think so. <clears throat> and you said uh, Pharmanex? Mm -hmm. Yes. What did Pharmanex sell? They sell fairly the same things as Amway. Uh, vitamins, laundry, protein drinks. Um, their big thing was their bio-available vitamins. When did you get involved with Pharmanex? Mm, I'd say maybe 25 years ago. And how long were you involved? Less than a year. And that's because the products just kept coming and we never sold. And you said Eola? Eola, yeah. Eola? Sorry, it's sound, yeah. Eola. <laughs> Sounds like the other disease. <laughs> um, yes. And um, what, do, what does Aola sell? They used to sell uh, weight loss drops. They were like energy weight loss drops in the 90s. Is that when you became involved? Yes. How long were you involved with Aola? Mm, I would say about eight years. Did you sign up uh, distributors or retailers underneath you? Yes. Was Mark involved in ALA too? <coughs> uh, he was with, supported me, but it was my business. Why did you stop selling ALA products? They filed bankruptcy. Is LuLaRoe a multi-level marketing company? Not to my, no, not at all. Why? Because we don't make you go on an auto ship program. There's no sign up fee. Um, I'm just comparing Amway or Aola to this. Um, they sell product that people want in my opinion. When you, you say they, are you referring to? The retailers, <coughs> the fashion IFRs. The LuLaRoe retailers. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. <coughs> and the LuLaRoe retailers um, are not, I mean, it's not like they are required to do anything. So in your mind, is the auto ship feature a, a defining feature of a multi-level marketing company? Yes. Is LuLaRoe a direct sales company? Um, I've heard them say that. Who, who's them? You hear it out in the world from people and they talk about it. When I say talk about it, retailers talk about it. Do you consider LuLaRoe a direct sales company? No. Why not? Well, I don't, there's no requirement. It's not like, you know, get rich quick. It's not, it's buy product, sell it. Buy it for wholesale, sell it for retail. Um. When we were talking about Terrell Transtrom earlier, you said he had, one of the reasons <coughs> Lulu hired him was because he had experience in direct sales. Is that right? I heard that he did. I cannot confirm it. Why was it important to hire someone with experience in direct sales? He was, is, I'm sorry, is the uncle to my son-in-law. And LuLaRoe was growing, and Mark and I were thankful that he, when 
my son-in-law mentioned that his in-laws were building this business and things were growing so fast that he had offered, hey, I have experience in this. So Mark and I got in a car and drove 14 hours to uh, Idaho Falls. And that's where we learned his experience. And he was like on it. I mean, ready to, he wanted to help as best he could. I can come to California, I will be there, help you get set up, head up, set up everything that you needed. Did you consider his experience in direct sales relevant? I don't know what his experience in direct sales was. You just said a moment ago that he described his experience to you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what he did in direct sales. What did he tell you that he did in direct sales? <clears throat> He never told me directly what he did. But you heard that he had experience in direct sales? Yes. Did you consider that relevant? We consider people that have experience and willing to help out as people that are an asset, I think. Did Terrell help out the company? Not to my preference. Mm, how so? I don't know. Mm, most of the time, most of the time I felt like he was causing stress. How was he causing stress? Mm, I, I don't know. I mean, to be specific, I don't know. It just was, he just did some pretty unprofessional things. But in I'm front of the internal, one one time he took a pot, a bu I mean a bucket and a mop, and he threw it on the table, and said, "I'm tired of cleaning up after your sh." You know what? I felt like that was incredibly unprofessional, and from then on, I stayed out of his way and didn't invite him in my way. Is, is that something he said to you or to someone else? To all of us. Who was there? I, uh, for sure, me and Mark. What were you discussing at the time? I have no idea. It was a common thing for him to be opinionated. What else was he opinionated about? Hired people that made decisions on salaries without consulting. And that wasn't his role. Did, was he involved at all in um, designing the bonus structure? I have no idea. Um, we're talking earlier about different types of events that uh, LuLaRoe holds for retailers. So I'm going to try to get a full list of those types of events. You said that there's the annual conference? Yes. Is that sometimes called Vision? Yes. Is it always called Vision? Mm, the last two. Okay. We decided to identify it as that. Did the previous ones have other identifiers? I'm sure they did. I would have to look. It's kind of blurs into there's, you know, many events throughout the years, year and years. Has uh, Lularo always had an annual convention for its retailers? Yes. What's the purpose of the convention? For me, it's. I think it's really important, especially because this business started out being primarily stay-at-home moms or moms that wanted to bring in income and I think they need an opportunity to gather. What happens at convention? Oh, there's everything from classes on how-tos and fashion ideas, how to put outfits together, how to pattern mix, 
how to identify what fabrics are which, what's a Hachi, what's polyester, what's a MVS, what's a ITY, what's a, you know. They, they learn about fabrics and they learn how something is sewn and they just an opportunity for them to come to the company and be together and learn from each other. Do they also learn from LuLaRoe? Yes. Uh, Who is invited to attend convention? Anyone that is a part of LuLaRoe. So any retailer? Yes. Are there any retailers that are expected to attend? No. So are there any ranks that are sort of expected to attend versus mm, other ranks? It's not. Check the form and ask them answer. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Does Lulero keep records of who attends convention? I am hoping they do. I have no idea. They have a registration. I'm getting a piece of gum. Is that okay? Is, uh, so you said it's most recently it's been held in Southern California? Um, you know, the first two were, what, the fir very, very first one was in Henderson, Nevada, and I think we had 30 people there. And then the second one was actually four months later, yeah, in Salt Lake City. And no. in January, you don't want to be in Salt Lake City. It's really cold. So we decided no more. We're doing them in California. That first one in Henderson, Nevada, do you remember what, what year that was in? In 2012. 2012? I mean 13, sorry. Or 2013. Oh, gosh. And then the, the Salt Lake City one in January, you said four months later, so that would have been 2014? Yes. Okay. And then after that, it's been in California? Yes. And it has, has it always been in July since then? Gosh, I don't know if we did it in June or July. I don't, I cannot remember, but it would be around that, those two months. Okay. Um, and how long does convention usually last? Two days. And retailers fly in to the location? I would think so. I think it would be hard to fly in from Hawaii, I mean, to drive in from Hawaii, but yes, <laughs> I think so. Are retailers uh, expected to pay their own travel costs? Mm, they choose to. Does LuLaRoe ever pay travel costs for retailers? Um, on? I, no, I've never. Mm -hmm. Do retailers pay their own uh, hotel costs? Yes. Okay. Do LuLaRoe employees also attend the convention? I'm sure they do. They work the event. Do you always attend? I try. Have you always attended? Yes. What about Mark? Uh, yes. So the last convention was this last July? Yes. Of um, 2019? Yes. How many people attended? Oh, I don't know. Like, do you want me to guess? Was it, you know, a thousand, a couple thousand, more than that? I think it was about 2,000. Where was it held? Anaheim. <clears throat> At a hotel? Yes. Okay. At the convention center. Uh, does LuLaRoe help arrange hotels, like arrange sort of block out a block of hotels? I can't answer that question. I'm not in charge of that. Where did you stay at the last convention? Or did you stay, did you stay in a hotel? Yes. Were there other retailers staying in the same hotel? I don't know. <clears throat> um, are there other sort of retreats that LuLaRoe holds? 
for retailers? Um, maybe reward incentive treat, retreats. What are reward incentive retreats? Mm, when, um, when they, we usually do like maybe, we've done, we have done in the past, we haven't done anything, a coach's retreat. Mm -hmm. So that if they feel like they want to, another time of the year, when they feel like they need connection. We have done them in the past. We haven't done them in two years. So when was the last coaches retreat that I you had? I have no idea. How, um, when you were holding co coaches retreats, how often were they held? Once a year. And was that for uh, retailers who had already made coach? Yes. Where was the last one held? Oh my goodness, I, I was just thinking in my head, I don't remember. Were where. you there? Yes, I think I was. Gosh, it's, like I said, it's been a long time. Uh, do you, was it your practice to attend the coaches retreats? Yes. How long was the last coaches retreat? Two days. What sort of events happened at the coaches retreat? Oh my goodness, laying around at the pool, eating dinner. They could get a massage if they wanted to, sharing ideas with each other by the pool. The guys would drum up golfing, you know. Mostly it was just a fun reason to get together. Were there trainings? Um, no, not really. Were there any sort of programs in there a There were discussions, room? but I wouldn't say formal trainings, but what? What sort of discussions were there? I, I, people, they gather <coughs> and they talk. And I have no idea what they said. I don't, I don't know. Was it, um, You said uh, retailers who are already coaches, were they allowed to bring guests? No. A, sp a significant other or a, a, I mean, it wasn't like they could invite mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and neighborhood friends. No. But was, they could bring a, a signif could. significant other, a spouse. Yes. Okay. And they could also, if they were single and they wanted to bring another retailer, I mean, and if they wanted to bring a friend, we didn't care. Sure. You know, but most of the time they... They wanted to come with somebody that knew about what they were doing, so it made it easier for them to enjoy. How many coaches retreats has Lulro held? I don't know. <clears throat> Any other sort of in-person events that Lulro has held? Other than uh, those trainings that we do, and when we go out into the field, when I say that, maybe I know we've been to places where re retail the IFRs is what you refer to them as. Uh, the retailers are wherever they say, "Hey, do you think you guys could come out? We've got groups of retailers that would love to have you." So. Um. I've heard of uh, in-person tours, like one was called Dare to Dream. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. So those are organized by LuLaRoe? The location, and um, but the trainings are organized by the retailers. And I've heard those referred to as tours. And would you participate in those tours? When I can. Um, I've also heard of mentor trips. Oh, yes, mentor trips. What are mentor trips? Um, same thing as coaches trips, incentivizing. When I say, I mean, they, they wanted to get together. When they're at that rank, they're overwhelmed. 
How are they overwhelmed? I don't, you know, I'm a female, and I think that we get overwhelmed, and we get stressed, and it's awesome when you can get together with people that you have the same interests in and have the same goals. So the mentor trips were for um, retailers who had achieved mentor? Yes. How often are they held? Once a year, but we haven't had any in like three years. For the mentor trips, are they um, allowed to bring spouses or significant others? Yes. Who pays for the mentors to go on the mentor trips? I don't know. Does Lura pay? I'm sure they take care of some things. You don't know what Lulura pays for? Mm -mm. They're called an incentive. You, you refer to it as an incentive trip? Yes. What, what is the incentive in the trip? You know, for me, uh, just, hey, you know, if you feel like you need training and then getting uplifted, then we'll We've got this trips coming up. If you want to join us, you know, please reach out, or we'll have somebody reach out to you. Is uh, the incentive that part of it is paid for by Lularoe? The incentive? Mm -hmm. No. Um, real quickly, we we were talking about convention a few minutes ago. Um, are retailers allowed to bring guests to convention? Yes. Can they bring prospective retailers? Yes. Do they? I don't know. Have you ever encouraged retailers to bring prospective retailers to convention? Me personally? Mm -hmm. I probably have. I don't recall when. Are prospective retailers allowed to, to sign up to become a retailer at convention? I have no idea. I've never seen that happen, mm -hmm. so I don't know. So let's go back to talking about the in-person tours. How, how often does Lula hold those in-person tours? It could be four to six <coughs> events a year. When was the last in-person tour? <coughs> oh, probably early November. Did that tour have a, a name? Lift. Lift? Yep. Yes. Sorry. Was there a tour in 2018? Yes. And what was the name of that tour? I don't recall. They're a theme every year. There's, yeah, so I've heard Be the Light. Was that 2017? Maybe. But there, you, you're familiar was, with the tour? I think that was a con the convention, oh. was Be the Light. What about Inspire? That's, uh, that's a, yeah, that's a lift. That's a, the tours. Tour. So each year they give it a new name, mm -hmm. just so that I guess they can identify it was this year, and then this year we did the, they were all called. Um, when you do those tours, who is invited to attend? Anybody that's a part of LuLaRoe or even interested in knowing more about LuLaRoe. So prospective retailers are invited? Yes. Um, and what happens on the tours? They're all different. How long are the meetings typically? Mm, they like them to go. They're like they, if they had their way, they'd be twelve hours long. But usually, it's like nine to five. So usually a four. single day, though. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> How many people typically attend? We've had them anywhere from 60 to 
200. And what happens at uh, those in-person tour events? Like I said, the retailers are the ones that decide what is to be taught. That is the need in the area. So they will come up with the program, they arrange for the speakers. When they do that, does LuLaRoe provide any assistance? Sound system, microphones, music, screen. Do the retail, retailers um, provide the agenda to LuLaRoe beforehand? Yes. Does LuLaRoe approve the agenda? Yes. If uh, the retailers are using any written materials, do they provide those to uh, LuLaRoe in advance? No. Are the retailers author authorized to provide written materials at those trainings or those in-person tours? I would assume so. I have no idea. I'm not involved in that. Who's uh, responsible for putting on the in-person tours on the LuLaRoe side? It, Kenny Brady. Has he always been? No. Who else has been responsible? Mm, I cannot recall. There are various people, but they don't work for us anymore. Jordan, I think Jordan yesterday was a part of He was a part of some of those in-person tours? Yes. They really like, they really love when anyone from the family comes. They just like it. They just, means a lot to them. They being the retailers? Yes. And how do you know that they really like it? When um, they, they express it. They just said it really means a lot to us to have you there. Um... LuLaRoe also has cruises, correct? Yes. How often does LuLaRoe, well, how do, how do the cruises work? They can qualify by selling $12,000 a month in retail sales any six months out of the year. And is that uh, $12,000 a month gross or net? It's just $12,000 in retail sales. And that's how a retailer qualifies? Yes. And then what happens if a retailer qualifies? They get to come on the cruise. If they can get away and get their sitting, their sit babysitters and anything else that they need to do. And LuLaRoe pays for the cruise? Yes. Does LuLaRoe pay their travel expenses to get to wherever no. the cruise disembarks from? No. no. Okay. But it pays for the, the room on, on the cruise? Yes. Okay. Does LuLaRoe pay for shore excursions on the cruise? No. Anything else on the cruise that LuLaRoe pays for? I think they pay for gratuities. They take care of all of that. And the taxes, I think. How often is there a cruise? Once a year. Is it usually held in the same month? It has been in February, but then last year we switched it up and changed it to March, and they loved it way better. So we're like, oh, okay, we'll move it to March then. So sometime in winter. Yes. Spring. Where does the cruise usually go? Uh, we like, I like it to be out of the Caribbean. So it's usually out of Florida, and we've had a couple of them that went out of Puerto Rico. But it's really hard to get to Puerto Rico now since the hurricane. Mm -hmm. So we're probably not going to do that again. Does LuLaRoe hold any meetings at the cruise? Yes. How often? Just one or two meetings that are an hour long. And then the retailers will usually find each other and congregate. 
and I'll walk past a room and there's a whole group of them sitting in a bar area talking or, you know, but that's their own organization. Is this usually a week-long cruise? Or? Yes. And retailers um, who qualify can bring a guest? Yes. Can they bring prospective retailers? If that's their choice, they get a plus one. How many people went on the last cruise? Oh, I don't know. Do you have a ballpark? Um, they said the rooms, there were enough to hold, I don't know, 3,000, but I know we had rooms empty that we didn't use up, so I have no idea what the exact number would be. I've also heard of um, Super Saturdays. Have you heard that term? Mm -hmm. What are yes. Super Saturdays? I, I, they, that's the retailers. They do that. And what are they, in your understanding? Um, I would think that, for me, if I were to attend or go to or organize a Super Saturday, it would be, hey, let's get together Saturday morning and talk for a couple of hours, come have coffee, uh, since my mom can watch the kids, or my husband can watch the kids, or my partner, and let's get inspired. Have you ever attended a Super Saturday? No. Have you ever called into a Super Saturday? Yes. And, uh, on the occasions that you called in, why did you call in? They called me. <clears throat> why? Hey, Deanne, do you think you could say hello to everybody that's here? Sure. So what did you say? I, I don't remember exactly. Usually I try to be really positive and happy and welcome them for being there. I think that's awesome. They get together. And Has the Luro ever asked uh, retailers to hold Super Saturdays? We're not asked, we encourage them. We give them suggestions. So Lularo has encouraged the Super Saturdays? Yes, because we hear so much positivity from others and when they call and say they, you know, I need help, I don't know what I should do. I don't know, why don't you try a Super Saturday? Get a bunch of the retailers together. All of you guys get together, coffee and sweet rolls or donuts or something. Does the Lula ever provide any um, support for the Super Saturdays? No. Any materials for use at the Super Saturdays? Not presently. Have, have they ever? I don't think so. Do you have any understanding of who is invited to attend Super Saturday events? No. You don't know? No. I don't know. Are there any other in-person events that Lularo holds that we haven't already spoken about? I am not quite sure. I mean, I'd have to really think. I'd have to go back in my calendars and look and see. But... Even that, I don't save calendars. But no regular events stick, stick out in your mind? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about phone calls or webinars. Um, uh, my understanding is Lua has a variety of types of regular phone calls or webinars for retailers. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, what types of uh, regular phone calls or webinars are there? They have a weekly one that's for all retailers, and then they have a weekly webinar Zoom for leaders. 
Okay, let's talk about the weekly one for all retailers first. Does that have a name? Oh, I think they do, but I don't know what it's called. Who at LuLaRoe organizes that call? Right now it's the, the, uh, the video team. Does the video team decide what is going to be discussed? I don't know. He, he could be going around, I'm sure he does, and talks to styling team, and I, I think he's talked to communications. Is there anything we need to share? Um, I'm not on all of them. Are you on some of them? Mm hmm How often do you attend? I just when I'm in the office and when I'm available. In a typical month, how many of the weekly calls would you attend? Two. When you attend, do you speak? Yep. What do you speak about? What happens to come to my mind. There's never planned out. What is it that I can do that would be of upliftment to women, especially that are feeling stressed? So you said it's never planned out, so do you ever have For me, any? it's never planned out. I don't know about what they do. And um, I would like to tell you that I watch them. I don't. Um, so so just for, for what you speak about, do you usually have notes or anything, or do no. you're speaking about what comes to your mind? Yep. Yeah. Um, you said all retailers are invited to attend the weekly call? Yes. Um, are prospective retailers ever invited to attend? I have no idea. And those are um, audio only, or are they video as well? Video. Are they recorded? Yes. And are the re recordings posted somewhere for, for retailers who missed it to watch, for yes, example? Yes, but I don't know where. Has Lularo had a weekly call or video since, since it started? I wouldn't say since. When did it start? Um, I would say officially, maybe four years ago. It's about 2015. Sounds about right. Yes, yes. Okay. <coughs> and then you said there's a, another weekly call for leaders? Yes. And who do you consider to be a leader? Anybody that is a sponsor, trainer, anybody that's got a team. And who's responsible for um, putting on those calls? They're the ones that have requested it because they want to be in the know before anything is announced on the calls. So they want to feel important. So the leader call is sort of a pre-call before the Actually, call for everyone? Actually, it's after. It's interesting because it's on a day after. So. so it evolved with them saying, you know, we'd like to know ahead of time. Oh, okay. Which I think it's silly, but we do it to make them feel important. What um, day of the week is the leader call to usually held on? Wednesdays. Okay. What about the re all retailer call? Tuesday mornings. The, the weekly leader call on Wednesday mornings, LuLaRoe puts that on? Um, it's uh, Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Oh, okay. And the, they come into my office, but I'm not always on that one either. How often are you on Maybe it? Maybe once a month. And who at LuLaRoe is responsible for putting it on? There's a sales and marketing team, and it varies. How, how long are the leader calls usually? Oh my goodness, it would be awesome if they were only 10 minutes. <laughs> but sometimes they go longer than that. Actually, a lot of times they go longer than that, so I don't know. How often are they usually? Mm, I bet they're probably a half an hour. And what types of things are discussed in the leader calls? You know, sometimes they ask questions. Tell me what's the fabric of this? How stretchy will it be? Are you going to go up to all the sizes? I mean, they're, they're kind of, in my opinion, 
you know, they're just curious minds want to know, mm -hmm. hey, um, will it fit our plus size women? How is it going to fit across? You know, it's just interesting. Um, and the other, usually it's always, always product driven. When can I get my product faster than someone else's? And then we have to kind of educate them and help them. Are the leader calls recorded? Yes, I think. And are they posted somewhere for leaders who missed to be able to see? You know, I don't know. I would think they are, but I don't know. Does Lularo keep a record of who attends the leader calls? I do not know. <coughs> what about the weekly Tuesday morning calls for all retailers? I think they know a percentage of people that have watched it, but they don't know who. So they can sort of tell how many views a video has gotten? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've seen references to a coach's call. No. Is that not a regular thing? No. Are there sometimes coaches calls? There may have been four or five years ago, but not. Are those replaced now by the, the leader calls? Yes. Okay. What about mentors calls? Same thing. I've seen references to training the trainers calls. Yes. What are those? I don't know. You don't know? I'm not part of that. Do those still exist? I don't know. Have you ever attended a training the trainers call? I may have gone into, passed by an office and someone said, hey, come in and say hello. And it could be a train the trainers. I have no idea. So we've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 103, which for the record is Bates numbered Lindsay 002359. I'll let you take a minute and take a look at this. Oh, yes. Does this look familiar to you? Is it from me? It doesn't appear to be... Um, I wouldn't have I, any I signature did, on it. I don't send emails. <laughs> so uh, this is an email. It, it's to lindsayjwheeler at gmail.com from LulaRoe. And the subject is, the LulaRoe Opportunity Call is back starting today. And it's dated July 12, 2018. Uh, do you know what opportunity calls are? Yes. What are opportunity calls? When this happened, I would assume it would be learn about the opportunity but it didn't go very far because I don't know anything about it. I did, I probably did one call. You personally probably did one call? I did one call at, at this time period and I haven't done, I don't it, recall. What was, and it, it, it looks like from the, from the email, um, that it was something that people who are interested in becoming retailers could attend? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it looks like the, the subject line is, is back starting today, so it looks like these calls were held at some point prior to July 12, 2018. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And then there was a break? A long break. Do you recall what periods they were held before this uh, July 12, 2018 email? No. Do you recall how long they were held? Maybe a few months. And 
why were they stopped? Because we felt like it was better for the retailers to talk to their people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And by talk to their people, do you mean talk to people well, they know, were some, trying to sign up? If they, yes. When, when they were talking to people, um, they occasionally said, hey, it would be really awesome if Deanne would do a call. I did, I think I did one or two calls. And then when I would turn it back over, say, reach out to the person that invited you on this call and talk to them about more questions that you have. And more than once, I forgot to get on the call <laughs> because I didn't have an assistant back then and so I thought okay this is ridiculous. Who at LuLaRoe was um, responsible for organizing the calls? Well there was a there are two retailers that came up with an idea I remembered and it was probably right a year ago and she said, oh my gosh, Deanne, do you remember when you used to do the opportunity calls? I wanted to go, yeah, like three or four of them. I don't, anyway, and she said, oh, it'd be so awesome. She's a former Mary Kay consultant. And so she asked if I would do a, a call, so I did. Who was that retailer? She's not with Lulu anymore. Well, who was she? I can't remember her name. That's why I remember she was with Mary Kay, but or had been with Mary Kay, and I thought, well, we're not, we don't do recruiting, recruiting calls. So I'm sure they let them know so that it wouldn't sound like I was doing favorites, you know, playing favorites by only doing it for a small group. I think that they just said, well, we should let everybody know if they have anybody that wants to be on it. And. Who within LuLaRoe home office was responsible for organizing the call? I don't know. And when they started back up again in July 2018, how long did they last? I recall only one time for me. Did others hold I, an opportunity call? I don't know. Did LuLaRoe keep a uh, record of who attended the call? I don't know. Would LuLaRoe record the calls and then post them? No. Not that I know of. Um, I've also heard of uh, Q Club calls. Do you know what that is? No. You don't know what that is? Mm -mm. Was there ever a, a call for um, people? We talked earlier about, let me strike that and start again. We talked earlier about the queue, which was people who were waiting to become uh, retailers. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Um, I've heard that sometimes referred to as the queue club. People in the queue were in the queue club. Have you heard that term? No. Was there ever a call for people who were in the queue waiting to become a retailer? I have no idea. Um, I've heard references to leadership calls. Does that sound familiar to you? We just talked about them. Those were the, um, yeah, the weekly calls for leaders. Okay. Any other regular calls for retailers, calls or video conferences? No. Switch gears a little bit and talk about trainings of retailers. Does, does LuLaRoe provide any trainings for retailers? Yes. And how so? We just talked about it. On these uh, various calls and in-person conferences? Yes. Okay. What sort of subjects does LuLaRoe provide trainings about? 
it really depends on what they need. It can vary. What subjects has LuLaRoe provided trainings about in the past? Oh, specifically, I don't have an idea. Uh, has LuLaRoe ever provided trainings regarding how to sell products? Yes. What kinds of things are covered in those trainings? How to put outfits together, how to encourage them to do in-person party events and how to wear a certain style, how it should fit. How not to sell below and, you know, pe some people undercut their fellow retailers and it's not, it's not kind. So we try to encourage them, hey, this is amazing. Does the Lula provide a suggested price? Yes. And what's that called? The minimum advertised price. So sometimes called MAP? Yes. Okay. And so you have trainings on using MAP to price products? No, not to price them. Uh, the prices are already out there, so they can look at them up. But it's more like, hey, if you've got these leggings, why don't you try putting together a, a shirt and a sweater to go with it and give people the option to put an outfit together? And um, like anything, you know, McDonald's always offers, can we ask, you know, Jack of the Box says, do you want to, can I throw in a dessert for you or something, you know, it's, it's upselling. So we talk about that. Um, we've talked about, you know, what are their goals? How, I know that there are some retailers that talk about, being consistent on when they go live or being consistent in their business. We talk about treating your business like a business, accounting, you know, referring people to get an accountant and be, you know, appro appropriate in their business so that they can take care of their financial obligations. Do you ever provide, does LuLaRoe ever provide trainings regarding how to recruit prospective retailers? No. Do they ever provide trainings on how to sign up prospective retailers? I don't know. I'm sure they do. But I, I can't answer that question. Do they provide trainings on how to manage retailers in their downline? Check to form, ask and answer. Yes. And what sort of things are covered in those trainings? Like, hey, it'd be really good if you get up early and get your day scheduled and start your day off with a plan and, you know, get the kids ready and load the dishwasher and then quickly go and throw in some laundry in the laundry machine and then send a post out about, I'm going to go live at 4 o'clock today and then go get your outfits all put together so that when you're ready... You know, surprisingly, so many people, they're just young in business. And they want, they want to know how they can become better. Does Lularo provide any trainings on social media use? Not that I know of. Any other training topics that we haven't talked about that you can recall? No. We talk about being nice to each other. That's a good, that's kind of an important golden rule, which is really astounding. <laughs> what do you mean being nice to each oh other? Oh my gosh, well you know, women are, they worry. Do you mean specifically retailers being nice to other retailers? Just in general, be kind to each other.
handed what's been marked as Exhibit 104, which for the record is Bates numbered LLR-WA-00042557 and is titled Chat with Brittany, Ashley, Lindsay, and Rebecca, dated March 17, 2015. Have you seen this before? No. Um, at, at the top it says Export Details, Device Name, Deanne Brady's iPhone. Uh-huh. Uh, and then down it says participants and it has four participants. Does this look to be like a record of a uh, text chat from your iPhone? Probably, yes. Okay. Um, looking at the per participants, um, the first one listed there, it says Brittany Comp Nash Tennessee looks, TN Rep. Do you know who that is? Yes. Who is that? Brittany Comp, who lives in Tennessee. She's a retailer. Do you know what rank she is? She mentor. Next one is Ashley Hilliard. Who is that? I'm confused. It's Ashley Hilliard. What do you mean? Who is that? Who, who is Ashley Hilliard? Is she a retailer? Yes, she is. They're all retailers. Okay. What rank is Ashley? Mentor. And Lindsay Wheeler is also a retailer? Yes. And what rank is she? Mentor. And Rebecca Andrews? Uh, maybe, I think she's a coach. And it looks like the, the first text message in this chain um, is in blue, which I believe means that it was from you. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. And it says, okay, fabulous reps. I'm My role is to look at these women who reach out to me and say, guess what? You can either carry it with a huge burden on your head or you can figure out ways that can improve yourselves. So I let them talk to each other. Mm -hmm. I let them get on a call to encourage each other. And I remember Ashley saying to Brittany, Brittany, we are strong. We're going to get through. I don't even know what they're over. But I get emotional about it because I went through the same thing. So going back to this email, what types of success stories were you asking them to share? Those. Checked as asked and answered. What do you mean those? So the success stories, for example, of um, I think you mentioned Lindsay Wheeler um, being able to, to. I think those are personal. Ret retire her husband. Mm -hmm. So you're asking them to share those sort of stories on the call? I don't know what they were going to share. I have no idea. I'm just telling you about their lives. So here in and this What text they choose to share is, was their doing. You were asking them to share success stories. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had a good day and they got their dishes done and <clears throat> threw in a laundry and made a job chart. And I do not know. I don't record. I don't record my calls. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 105, which for the record is Bates numbered LOR-WA-0004260 and is titled Chat with Brittany, Justin, Kelly, Kim, Kenny, Brittany, Tori, Chelsea, Ashley, Ashley, dated March 16th, 2015. And this again looks, looks to be a record from a, a text chat on your iPhone, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And do you recognize it? No. Um, let's look at uh, the participants list. Um, who who is Brittany Hunter? Is she a? Oh no, we talk. Is that a different Brittany? Di different Brittany. Mm -hmm. Is she a retailer? Yes. What rank is she? Mentor now. Do you recall what rank she was in two thousand fifteen? No, I think she was probably just a trainer. I would say all of these were just a trainer. All of these. Uh, all were of the trainers? retailers on here in two thousand fifteen. We didn't have. Okay. Anybody higher than a trainer at the time? Is everyone on this participants list a retailer? No. Um, who who are not retailers? Justin, Kenny. That's it. So uh, who is Justin? 
My son-in-law, Justin Lyon. And he works for LuLaRoe? Yes. What is his role? Mm, I don't know. They just changed it. What is it now? Social media. What was it before social media? It's varied. And then Kenny is Kenny Brady, yes. your son? Yes. And he's in charge of, or uh, he's in sales and marketing, you said? Right now, he is. Do you recall what he was doing in 2015? Mm -hmm. You said you don't currently check Facebook. Did you check Facebook at some, some time in the past? I, I have no idea. I may have. In this uh, text message, you, you mentioned that you had noticed a lot of Facebook posts. How would you have noticed those posts? Probably because people came to me and showed them to me. What sort of people? I don't know. Maybe Terrell did. Maybe Mark did. Was there someone at LuLaRoe responsible for monitoring social media? Not that I know of. In particular, I have no idea. It could be someone in this group that said, oh my gosh, there's some really great things happening. Mm -hmm. I, I would never have, I mean, that's why I'm asking them to share with me. And why did you ask them to share those successes? Because it's fun, positive. What did you do, intend to do with those stories? Uplift and encourage. What's amazing? The, the stories are amazing. The stories that are then yeah. posted later yeah. in this text chat? <laughs> you didn't read them? I read them. Okay. They're amazing. Why do you think they're amazing? I don't know. I think it's... That's all the questions I have on that. Do you have... Um, we, we talked earlier about... Oh, yeah. all right. Thanks, Anthony. The court oh. reporter has to keep all of the exhibits. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were mine. It was my library. I'm sorry. Here we go. I'll be better. <coughs> um, so it sounds like LuLaRoe often asks retailers to run trainings for people on their teams. No, I think we suggest... And then you support them in that endeavor. Is that fair to say? Yes. Has Uluru ever um, provided retailers with any guidelines to use when training their downline? No. Not that I know of. Has Uluru ever um, done any trainings for retailers on how to run a training? Not that I know of. When a trainer runs a training at a LuLaRoe event, like at, at, on a cruise or at convention, you said they're, um, they provide their agenda to LuLaRoe beforehand? Not on the cruise. Not for the cruise, but for convention? Yes. Who approves that agenda? I don't know. That's not you? No. When retailers do trainings at convention, do they sometimes use slides like PowerPoints or pictures? Yes, I've seen those. Do they provide those to uh, LuLaRoe before the convention? I'm sure they do. Who at LuLaRoe approves them? I don't know. It's not you? No. Does LuLaRoe market its products? Check to the form. Other than a blog and Instagram. A LuLaRoe blog? Yes. And who maintains the blog? I don't know. And LuLaRoe has an Instagram account? Yes. Who maintains that? 
I don't know. Um, you mentioned earlier a photography team who takes photographs of the clothes. Is that for the Instagram account? I think so. What other uses are the photographs they take of the clothes? Uh, for display of this is on this, this style fits this body and this body and this body. We try to make sure that the fit on what we, our sizes run extra, extra small to triple XL in most styles. Does LuLaRoe provide any photographs or any materials about the clothes to retailers to help them sell it? They have access to those. How do they have access? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I, I hear that they get the, they call them, well, they call them assets. They call the, the marketing materials assets? Yes, so that they can get, I want to know what does this style look like on this size body and and so they'll do a photo shoot and make them available. And you don't know how they get get those where they're made available? Mm -mm. They get communication, I'm sure, because I see people reposting. <clears throat> Are there any other uh, type of visuals that were, are made available other than photographs of the clothes? I don't know exactly. Is the LuLaRoe logo made available for use by the retailers? I'm sure it is. Has LuLaRoe ever done any studies or surveys regarding its products? I do not recall. Does Lula track in any way what um, styles or patterns are selling better than others? Yes. How does how how do you track that? I believe we have a we just I've heard them talk about it. I've not seen it, but a sell through data to see which are more popular. Some. I've heard sell faster than others, and it also depends on the season. Where is that sell-through data held? I have no idea. Has Lularo always maintained that sell-through data? No. Is that recent development? Yes. How recent? A year? Two years? I don't know. That's something that Mark takes care of. I don't, hmm. I don't have anything to do with that, any of that. Before you had that data, how did LuLaRoe determine what styles or patterns were selling better than others? I think just hearing about it, I have no idea. I think it's probably a, a good time for a break. Thank you. Okay. Off the record, the time's 11.38 a.m. Going back on the record, the time is 11.49 a.m. So when we were talking earlier we, about different events, in-person events that Lulura holds for retailers, you, you mentioned that your um, the retailers always like it or it's well-received when uh, the family attends. And, and you mentioned Jordan specifically as being well-received at the events. Do you encourage your family to attend? Yes. And is that the, f the family who works for uh, LuLaRoe? It's not just the family. Uh, I think it's important that anybody that's in the home office goes to these events. They like Jordan because he's fun. He's funny. And have you encouraged Jordan to attend events? Yeah, I, I encourage all my kids. I think it's good for them to be present and see what people do and how they can serve. Do you work directly with Jordan? No. Have you ever? No. 
Has he ever helped you on any projects? No. What is Jordan's role with the company? I don't know. He moves around. Does he have a title? No, not that I know of. Did he ever have a title? I'm not big on titles, so I don't know. And who does he report to? I don't know. Um, we talked uh, briefly, we mentioned um, earlier the LuLaRoe Facebook account. I Did don't they, know. There is a Facebook account? I have no idea. And they have an Instagram account? Yes, I do know that. And who's responsible for maintaining that? I already answered that question. I have no idea. Do you ever update it? No. Do you ever give instructions to update? No. Who's responsible for social media more generally within LuLaRoe? There's a team. Who's on the team? Oh, it vacillates from whether it has to do with product or has to, I don't know, I just, it's, they're probably, I mean, it goes anywhere from, I don't know, there's groups of people. Is there one person that's responsible primarily for social media? I have no idea. Uh, Justin Lyon, I already told you that, that that is his um, new department role place. I don't know if he's in charge of that. I don't think he is, but he's part of the social media team. And that was, it sounded pretty recent that yes. you joined that? Mm -hmm. Like, real recent. Did he replace anyone? No. If you had a question about social media and LuLaRoe's social media, who would you go to? I don't know, probably one of my kids. Which one? No, I mean, like, maybe, but if it was Lula, is it, you're talking LuLaRoe? Yes. Oh, no, not one of my kids. Um, there's a girl named Tanya, but again, I don't know. I know there's several people that work on that. On it, Doris, I don't know. Do you know Tanya's last name? Yamas. How do you spell that? L-L-A-M-A-S. But I don't think she's, I don't, I don't even know if she's in charge. I don't think she's in charge of that. I mean, I don't know. Are LuLaRoe employees plain, uh, trained on the use of social media? No. I think the people that are doing social media are, but not as a whole. what's been marked as uh, Exhibit 106, which for the record is bait stamp LLR-WA-0004256 and is titled chat with Brittany, Justin, Art, Kim, Kenny, Sadie, Lisa, Lindsay, Shannon, Megan, and then I believe it, it's cut off, um, and is a uh, chat from your iPhone dated May 1st, 2017. Is that correct? Is that where it is right there? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recognize this chat? No. Does it look to be a, a, a record of a chat, a text chat from your phone? I, I send out lots of chats. Okay. It's a lot <laughs> easier for me to do. So it sounds like you, you use chat more than email. A text, Texting. text groups. Yeah. Yep. This was sent during some event? Probably. It was. We usually do a leadership during May, so this is May. So I'm not sure when that leadership was. Um, then if you could turn to page 36 of the chat. 
Oh my goodness. That's a it long just one. kept going on and on. <laughs> they do. That's hilarious. Oh. Actually, if you why don't we um, go to page thirty four and thirty five first? Okay. It looks like um, on page thirty four and thirty five different people on the chat are sending pictures of a group of women and it looks to me like you're there in front front in a long black and white dress. Mm -hmm. well, everyone's in black and white. Um, does that refresh your recollection of, of when, what event no. might have happened around this time? No, we no? take a lot of pictures, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to refresh my memory. Okay, if you, if you could turn to page 36. Does the dates change? Hmm. Anyway, so page 36, see. okay, so then um, the first uh, item on the agenda, it says 9 to 945, social media with Kristen. Do you know what that refers to? No. Do you know of um, someone within LuLaRoe named Christian? Yes, but he doesn't work for us anymore. Uh, did he work for you back in 2017? Yes. And what was his role? I don't know all of it. What was, I don't know all of it. What was his last name? Was it Christian Cannon? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I have an, two other Christians. So I'm going, what the heck was his name? Uh, to your recollection, was Christian ever responsible for training uh, retailers on social media? He, from the pictures that I've seen on his personal social media, he's really great at photography. So he may have, and he's got a lot of followers, so he may have shared ideas on what they could do. And what social media is that I that you've know. seen on his social media? His personal one. I remember when he had his babies and he would show the pictures. I mean, you know, what kind of circulated. Oh, my gosh, like a Christian's picture of his new baby. And Was that on his Facebook account or his Instagram account? Probably Instagram on his phone. Okay. So you don't recall Christian teaching social media at the cruise? No, I wasn't there. Were you on this cruise? Yes. I didn't attend probably most of these. The only ones I attended was Q&A, Deanna Mark. So that's uh, the halfway through the agenda, 1 to 145 and 2 to 2 to 5, Mark and, uh, Deanna and Mark Q&A. Yes. Was that regular, was a Q&A something that would regularly happen on the cruises? No. Why was there a Q&A on this cruise? I mean, it happens. And so the minute somebody says, hey, could we do a Q&A? Sure. We'll send out a group, group text. But it's not like it's planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, if anybody's got some, they love, they just, they love being around anybody and everyone that's from the home office. What type of questions did you get at the Q&A? <clears throat> How fast can I get my order? How come I can't get what I want? Could we have a, could we have a line that says just black and white and brown and navy? <laughs> they ask the silliest questions over and over again. You know, like you have an opportunity to be with it. One, one of the questions is, we receive paper boxes. What should we do with them? Mark goes, send them to be recycled. That's what we do. <laughs> so, who knows? Um, looking up above the question and answer a bit, it says 1 to 2 p.m. men's chat. Do you know what that refers to? Yeah. What yes. is that? Men's chat. Men get got together to talk about how they can better support their wives. What do you do? Oh, I wash the dishes and I take out the trash and... I get the kids to bed while my wife is going live. Oh, okay, maybe I should do that too. Is that something that would regularly happen at, on the cruise? No. Did you attend that? Mm -mm. 
Did someone from LuLaRoe at, uh, home office attend? I have no idea. You, you said how to better support the, the wives. Was that specifically for spouses of retailers they or were male always, retailers attending as well? They, anybody can attend. The guys probably pulled up their own class. Hey, let's get together in the bar and have a Q&A while we can watch the, the football scene that's going on up there. I mean. Um, looking a little bit further down on the agenda, it says Blaze Deck 4 Forward, 1 to 145, Sugar Mama's Training Time. Do you know what that mm -hmm. first do? Is Sugar Mama's a team? Maybe. I. Then okay. uh, below that it says 2 to, two, two to 3.30 p.m., Brittany Hunter Team Time. Is Brittany Hunter a retailer? Yeah, she's yeah. on this group. Yeah. So is that a, a time for her to get together with her team then? Yes. I would assume. I don't know what she did. Um, and then at the bottom it says Jazz Deck 4 Forward, 12 to 1 p.m., Mobile Boutiques Using In-Home Mobile. Do you know what that refers to? People bought by trailers and they travel around. And so was that a training on, on how to do that? I don't know. I didn't attend it. We don't get involved in that kind of thing. I think that's a lot of work, but hey. Um, then if we could turn to page 13 of this chat. Which, which one? Page 13. She's in charge of the cruises. What's her last name? Sanchez. Does she still work for LuLaRoe? Yes. How long has she worked for LuLaRoe? Mm, I don't know, maybe three years. Has she been responsible for the cruises that whole time? I have no idea. Did you attend the, the private shopping event? Yes. That she's referring to? Yes. And what was that event? It was on the cruise ship, and they had all the stores open if anybody wanted to go shopping. It was just fun to wander and look and see. It was the ship's version of, hey, could we invite you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and it sounds like mentors and execs were invited? Sure. That's what that came from the ship. And what does execs refer to? I don't know. Why was it the invitation limited to mentors and execs? I don't know. You'll have to call the ship. Most of the time on these things, I am so worn out and overwhelmed, and I just go with the flow. They plan things. Hey, go to the top deck, meet with a <coughs> cruise captain. And Um, you can put that one aside. Okay. Then we're going to look at Exhibit um, 64. Seven. Thank you. 
so you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 107, which is base numbered LLR-W0004256, and looks like it's a, another chat text from your uh, iPhone dated September 28th, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, does that look right? Yes. Okay. Oliver refers to. Yes. Who? His name is Oliver Luckett. He lives in Iceland. He lives in Iceland? Mm -hmm. Is he a LuLaRoe employee? No. Is he a consultant? He was at the time. He's not now. So he's someone that LuLaRoe hired? Yes. Okay. Um, did they, did LuLaRoe hire the, him for social media trainings? Uh, we hired him to do a few things, but I don't know exactly, and that's why he didn't stay on. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. What did he say he was going to do? He was supposed to teach us social media. <laughs> we, you know. And teach and, us. Who do you mean us? Okay. You can put that one down. Um, does LuLaRoe do anything to attract prospective retailers? No. How does, um, LuLaRoe get new retailers? Word of mouth. Does LuLaRoe um, expect or encourage retailers to recruit new retailers for their downlines? I think it's important to always be thinking of ways to help other people. And one way to help other people is to encourage them to become a LuLaRoe retailer? No, if they can, they feel like there's a need, they don't want to go back to work after having a baby, or they've got a husband that's sick, or a relative, or a family member. If they know that they've got an ability to make money sitting in their home, then this could be a blessing into their family's lives. And so LuLaRoe uh, encourages retailers to help people by encouraging them to become retailers? No. Rejection misstates. Why do you think it's important to help people in the context of becoming a LuLaRoe retailer? Because I did it for 27 years and raised seven children, went through a divorce, became a single mom with seven children and manage to take care of my family while being able to do this from home. <coughs> Does LuLaRoe provide any guidelines or policies for retailers um, with respect to recruiting prospective retailers? I'm sure there is. I don't know exactly. Where would you look to find out whether there are any policies? I would look in the policies and procedures. Is that a specific document? Yes. Uh, policies and procedures for retailers? Yes. Is that um, something that retailers sign at the outset of becoming a retailer? Uh, you would have to ask my counsel. I have no idea exactly how it is done. I'm sure there's a contract. I just don't know exactly. Do retailers ever ask you for advice on how to build their team? Yes. And what do you say? Get to the point. Overbroad. Yeah. I give them okay. advice. What sort of advice do you give? Talk to people. Tell them what you do. And if they perk up and say they're interested, then you can answer more questions. What do you mean, tell them what you do? I buy wholesale. I sell retail. 
People come to my home, I can sell online, I can do events. This is how I make money. And if they say, oh my gosh, I want to do that too, okay, let me show you how I do it. Do you ever encourage retailers to tell um, prospective retailers how much money they make? No. Retailers are smart. They can see the wholesale price and the suggested minimum advertised price, and they know the difference in what the profit margin is. Do you ever encourage re uh, retailers to share how much they made um, in a particular bonus check? No. 2015, and your testimony is that it only happened for a couple of weeks? Yeah. 2014. Yeah. It only happened a couple of weeks? Yes, I only did these a couple of weeks. Did anyone else ever host them? I don't know. The story that you would sh share? That is the story, because that is my story. And it says the call was held every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Does that mm -hmm. sound right? Yes. But again, um, I only did it for a couple of weeks because I realized half the time I forgot about the call. And I was either buying fabric or down meeting with our sewers whatsoever. So I realized, you know, I'm not very consistent. Um. <clears throat> Do you know how many people typically attended the call? Mm -mm. Was it a call or was it a Just video a conference? Just a call. Yeah. They'd call in. And the whole conversation was just me telling my story about how I did it. Okay, you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 109 which is dates numbered LLR-WA-0002343 is an email from LuLaRoe to Jody Keach. Um, subject is LuLaRoe opportunity call today mm -hmm. and it's dated April 3rd, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not on this email, but um, just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Who, who w was Jody Keach? What was her role? She's a coach, but at the time she was probably just a retailer. When I say just, I don't think she was as, you know, hadn't gotten to another rank in her business. So it looks like uh, Jody was planning on um, handling the LuLaRoe opportunity call that day? Yes. Is that something that would, would often happen, that um, <clears throat> retailers would be asked to handle it? Mm, sometimes. I don't remember exactly, but their stories were pretty awesome. And then um, it attaches the LuLaRoe Fashion Consultant Business Overview document, and it says, for your reference. Is that something that would um, often be covered on the opportunity calls? Mm -mm. No. I think she just asked for it. Do you recall her asking for it? No. <clears throat> Are you familiar with the business opportunity or the business overview document? Well, it says right here it's from Kenny Brady, so I didn't send that. Sure, but uh, if you could turn to the, that second page, um, the LuLaRoe Fashion Consultant Business Overview. Uh -huh. Have you seen this before? Nope. You've never looked at it? Nope. Maybe um, Tara. I don't know. I don't even know where this came from. What'd you say? Maybe Tara? I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I have no idea. It's from 2014. Okay, you can put that one. So you've been handed what's dated April 8th, 2014, from Elizabeth Reed to Info Row, um, and it 
starts out by saying, thank you so much for joining us on our LuLaRoe opportunity call. You just heard Deanne Stidham, president and founder, tell you about the LuLaRoe story, the business opportunity, and what the next steps are in becoming a LuLaRoe fashion consultant. Um, have you ever seen an email like this before? No. Is, was it uh, when the opportunity calls were um, taking place, was it a regular practice to send a follow-up email to the participants? I have no idea. <clears throat> I think it's pretty smart. Why is it pretty smart? Well, because if people don't know what to do next, they can get on a call. People like to have a conversation. They want to talk to the company direct. So they probably, you know, there were people that were just anxious to be a part of this business. And they still are. Why? Because it's a great business. It's a great opportunity for families who want to bring in extra income. They can work hard and they see their benefits. Yeah, I think I'm almost done with this subject, and then we can break for lunch. Yeah. Um, Have you ever told a retailer to focus more on building their downline than on sales? Mm -mm. Not that I recall. <clears throat> But if they built a downline, I don't want them to neglect their downline either. You brought them in. I feel there's a, a moral responsibility to help them do their best. What are um, the retailers' responsibilities through the downline? Oh, I think it's a responsibility to call and check on them, see how they can help them. Give them encouragement, give them suggestions. Anything else? <coughs> um, okay, I think we can take a break for lunch now. Off the record, the time is 12.27 p.m. Are we good doing a, a quick... Going back on the record, the time is 1.18 p.m. Have you ever heard of the website LuLaRoeCustom.com? No. It's okay. We don't need it right now, so that's okay. <laughs> what's been marked as Exhibit 111, which is case numbered LLR-WA-00005706, and is email from LuLaRoe, where fashion meets comfort to Deanne, dated August 14th, 2015. Have you seen this email before? Probably not. It looks like uh, the two is to Deanne. Is, that's you? I don't read my emails. Okay. <laughs> So um, this is an email. Uh, the subject is LuLaRoe updated Dare to Dream tour dates. Um, is Dare to Dream uh, one of the in-person tours that we were talking about yes. earlier today? Yes. Okay. Um, and if you turn to the second page, there's a list of dates there. Uh, and well, actually, I want you to be on the first page. <coughs> The list of dates starts on the first page, and the first date says September 2nd, Seattle, Washington. Do you see that? Yes. Was there a uh, in-person event on September 2nd, 2015 in Seattle? 
to your recollection? There probably was. Did you attend it? I would have to go back and see, but most likely, yes. what's been marked as Exhibit 112, which is an email, Bates numbered LLR-WA-0001310 from the Lula Pops to uh, a variety of people, including Deanne LulaRoe, um, dated September 9th, 2015. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. um, and, and there it looks like someone named uh, Kelsey Lindhall is emailing and says, hi there. I talked with Deanne in Seattle last week. Do you see that? Yes. Who is Kelsey Lindhall? I don't know. Um, and she's talking about uh, talking with you in Seattle last week, and this is September 9th, 2015. Would that confirm in your mind that you were probably at that Seattle event? Probably. I talked to, at these events, there were hundreds. I mean, they were pretty big back in 2015. I mean, like more than 100 people. So I probably, I mean, I know I talk to a lot of people. So these, these uh, events like the one on September 2nd, 2015 would have hundreds of retailers or prospective retailers mm -hmm. at them? Yes. Do you recall what, uh, what um, programs there were at the um, Dare to Dream tour? No. It would be similar to what we talked about, the in-person tours, when we talked about them earlier today? Yes. Okay. been marked as Exhibit 113, um, which is an email, Bates numbered LLR-WA-0000-6054 from LuLaRoe, where fashion meets comfort, to Deanne. The subject is LuLaRoe Weekly Home Office Update Notes, April 12th, 2016. Have you seen this before? No. Um, it says Weekly Home Office Update Notes. Are you familiar with a, a weekly home office update email? No. Not back in 2015. I'm sure we were doing things. I'm sorry? I'm sure they were sending out information. <clears throat> if you look at the bottom, it um, says Deanne, founder and president, and then has a message that continues on to the second page. Is that a message from you? I would not have written it, but it's a message from me. So someone else may have written it, but it was coming from you. Most definitely. Okay. Earlier you said that uh, people they could do. bring. Yes, okay. yes. So just to make sure the record's clear that they could bring uh, prospective retailers to the in-person events. Yes. Okay. Um, do you know who these weekly home office update uh, emails went to? No, I'm assuming it went to the retailers that were already signed up. All retailers? Yes. Looking um, onto the next page that ends in dates number 6056, um, it looks like there's a uh, list of inspi 2016 Inspire training tour dates. Is that uh, the 2016 in-person training tour? Yes. Okay. Um, and it looks like there, uh, the third line down is Seattle, Washington, March 30th, 2016. Do you recall that? I'm sure it's on here. I don't recall it exactly. Looks like a lot of dates. 
D did you attend the one in uh, Seattle? I don't recall, but I probably did. Okay. I am. Um, I still try to attend all of them that they that they have. So um, in your message where you referred to, um, we are now seeing between 200 to 500 people coming to learn with us, that 200 to 500 would include that Seattle um, March 30th, 2016 event? Probably. When you attended um, the in-person tour events, would you stay the entire day? Not on these. We tried something new, as you can see. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at this. Boise, Seattle, Portland. We just, we did these quick tours and we'd go and it, we'd go for half a day. And then we'd travel to the next location, go to the next one, half a day training, leave and travel to the next one so that we could get more um, visitation with the retailers. We don't do that now. We spend the whole day now. We used to, in the beginning, spend the whole day, and then we decided to try something different. Mm -hmm. It was too much. A lot of travel. A lot of travel. Oh, my gosh. I was worn out. When you were doing these um, where you would stay a half a day, would the training still be a full day? You would just attend yes. half of it? Mm -hmm. And you um, are saying we, who, who's the we that you were attending these with? Whoever came with me, sometimes it was various home office people. Would Mark attend? No. Would anyone else in the family attend? I can't recall exactly who did. Would Jordan attend? Maybe. What about Kenny? Yes. Christian, Art, I mean, there's a lot of people in the home office <coughs> that come to show support. We've had our accountant go, we've had other retailer, other, I mean, home office people. Um, you can put that one down. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 114. Um, which is a an email, Bates numbered LLR dash WA 001-0001350-4 from Kenny Brady. It looks like to a concierge um, asking to print um, an attachment. And so I'm going to ask you to look at the second page, which is um, titled Seattle WA Inspire Tour Agenda. Have you seen this before? No. Does it look like uh, consistent with your recollection of what the agenda would have been for the Inspire Tour? Yes. Yeah. Um, looking at the first line, it says, Welcome Expectations and Recognition, Sam. Do you know what that refers to? Sam would get up and dance around and get everybody else dancing and... I, I don't know exactly what he did. I just know that he would just get up and be enthusiastic. Sort of pump up the crowd? Yep. Um, who, who is Sam? Sam is Sam Schultz, and he's my nephew. And what's his role with the company? None. None? Does nope. he, is he not an employee? No. But he would attend the tours? He did in the, at this period. Okay. And why did he attend the tours? Because he was in charge of being the hype man. Mm -hmm. And he was single at the time, and it was a lot easier for him to be able to travel. Um, then it has a list of bullet points, and it lists host leaders. Do you know what that refers to? Where does it say list host? Oh, host leaders. Yeah. I thought I was looking for a list. Oh. Um, those were probably the girls that were in charge of that event. Inviting, reaching out, making sure that people knew where it was, if there were any questions, they could reach out to those people. Are those retailers or are yes. they? Okay, the retailers. 
Um, so were they then local retailers? I don't know exactly where these re these girls live, so I don't know, but I'm assuming. Oh, then, sorry. The next line is traveling coach. It says Danielle Russell and Lindsay Wheeler. What does that refer to? They said, hey, we want to go to the other <coughs> events. Can we follow around and be there with our people? I said, sure. So they wanted, like, whoever was, like, if Sam was introducing, he just needed to know, hey, we'd like to welcome Danielle Russell and Lindsay Wheeler, who are here, love on them, too, because they're here to show support. So they were essentially introduced at the beginning by Sam. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the next line at 910 says, Paper, Rock, Scissors, Justin, Kenny. Do you know what that refers to? They did uh, a big paper, rock, scissors, and it was kind of to get the crowd up and moving and get them out of their seats. And then we would then have them go move seats. Oh. Okay, everybody go find another place to sit. Sort of an icebreaker. It was, <laughs> yep. Is that Justin, Lyons, and Kenny, yes. Brady? Yes. Okay. Um, then the next line, it says, Lisa and Tori video. Do you know what that refers to? Yes. What is that? It's, there's a video that we did on their stories. And so that was played for the audience? Yes. Okay. And then the next line, 935, says Deanne's story, Deanne. What does that refer to? That means me telling the little girl story. How did I get started? How did I find little girls' dresses at a swap meet? How did I make a maxi skirt for my daughter? Mm -hmm. And how it grew from there. Um, the next line, 110, is says Dream Circles Kenny. What mm -hmm. does that refer to? So they put great big post-it notes mm -hmm. all over the room, and we just mm -hmm. said, you know, why are you doing little wrong? Mm -hmm. We want to know what is it this, that you are wanting to do this. And you could see, I want to bring my mom and dad home. I want to I wanna be able to spend more time with my kids. I would like to take my kids on a trip to the beach. I would like, you know... So each, like so each retailer would write on the post-it notes and then they would be put on the wall? Yes. And what, why is it, what's the circle in that? So in Simon Sinek, he wrote a book on Leaders Eat Last, mm -hmm. and he talks about the, oh, you're going to make me explain it, and I don't even know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. There's a circle, and then there's an inner circle, and then it's like, it's like your deepest concerns, like all your stresses and everything, the bills, the, you know, trying to buy groceries, are in the inner circle. The outside circle is this outside, and it's like, I want to take my kids on a trip to Disney or something. So then there's an arrow that says, what are you going to do to get from here to here? <coughs> it's a, a form of uh, goal setting. Okay. And Kenny, that's Kenny Brady? I think I did that well. I never explained that before. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Kenny was in charge of that because okay. he's full of a lot of enthusiasm. Okay. Um, then a 10.30 announcement and updates. Could be, hey, we're all going to go get lunch, or hey, we've scheduled coffee time. If anybody wants to join us, it'll be at my house, bring the kids to play, you know, girl time to figure out how to figure, what, what can we do to help you? Lots uh, of training for them to not feel like they're alone. Uh, the next line, 1040, says, why, Justin? Do you know what that refers okay, to? Okay, yes. In Simon Sinek's book, he also wrote a book called Start With Your Why. And he quotes in there, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And he talks about, there's a video that shares with about Simon Sinek, and he says about how come uh, HP computers didn't grow as fast at the time they were introduced along with Apple. And he talks about Steve Jobs and... He, or they were talking about like uh, anyway. He it, it's basically they show a video from Simon Sinek and it's on YouTube, and it's start with your why, and he tells about it. Why do, why are some companies more successful than others? And it just gives people permi permission to start thinking, what is it? Why am I doing this? Because if you don't know your why, it's like oh this is like overwhelming and I'm not, you know. Believe me, there were days when I didn't want to get up and do any of it. And I went, nope, got to go. Okay, so the next line, 1120, traveling coach, and it says Danielle and Lindsay again. Um, what does that refer to? I think, I mean, it's not very much time, but I think they got into groups and they 
they shared what they do and then they got into groups and helped people so it looks like it was only um, 40 minutes and they talked to them. The Q Club, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't, I mean it could be a minute saying who's here that's brand new, we'd like to welcome you if you have any questions. But I don't think we ever separated them or anything. It was just more of knowing, letting us know that they're there so that in case people do have questions, you know, you kind of know when they go, okay, now how, how do I sell something? You're like, oh my gosh, you must be really new at this. We got to help them. I talked about earlier that was referred to people who were in. Oh, sorry. Um, that, that would refer to people who are in. Uh, the queue in the waiting period. Yes, waiting. Okay. There were a lot of people that wanted to start, and we just did not, you know, we just, we kept it limited. We didn't just, it would have been really easy to just take all that money. And we're like, no, you have to know that you really want to do this. The next line is uh, at 1210, 72 hour game plan, Kenny. Do you know what that mm -hmm. refers to? So, you know, in the very beginning, uh, we just did not know what do we do to help people, what's our plan, and you know, it's like, if you can count to four, or Zig Ziglar, and all this other stuff, and there was a, a guy who wrote a, a game plan that said, you know, find ten people, get your list <coughs> together, you know, it's a plan of action. So, like, what to do in the first 72 hours of your business. And people need direction, so it's like, okay, here's some... One, two, three, four is about what you can do and who to talk to and, you know, and then the fourth one is repeat one, two, three, and four. Okay. At 1240, it says Q&A. Mm -hmm. Do you recall who that Q&A would have been with? Mm, usually it's with maybe just me and some of the people that were like Danielle and, and Lindsay Wheeler and, and probably Jennifer Grulke, Hannah Irvin, and Haley Miner would get up and they could answer questions. And then the final thing on the agenda says, if you can count to four, Deanne, what is that? So I found a book that was dated in 1957 from a guy who wrote the book called If You Can Count to Four, and it was really how I started. Basically, it's just decide what you're going to do. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. I mean, be confirmed in what you're going to do and set a goal and dream about it. Then visualize what you're going to do and then put it into effect to make it happen. You can't just sit around and assume it's going to be successful. That's it. Um, and okay. it was very specific actions. You could put that one okay. aside. And we're going to go to 62 from yesterday. Um, okay. which for the record is um, the extended LLR dash WA 00014907 and this is an email from Kenny Brady to Jordan Brady um, attaching Seattle Fall to Inspire to our agenda. Do you recall th that there was a second uh, Inspire Tour lo location in Seattle in, in September of that same year? No. Would you have attended that one? Yes. Um, looking at the agenda, it looks like you, you are on the agenda at 920. What is this business and how it was created? So that... My story. Okay. Um, why would there have been a second uh, location in Seattle in the same year? I am sure they called and said, please, please come on back up. We want to have you. We missed it. And we've got people that didn't get to hear your story, so we... Are there to encourage and lift and support. Um, looking at the agenda f uh, for this for this event, um, you said that the 920. What is this business and how it was created? Would be your story. Uh huh. Yes. Um, at 10:40, it says visiting leaders question mark. 
Do you know what that refers to? That means anybody that was visiting, they could get up or they and talk and share. Or, um, I um, maybe they shared their why. Like, why do they do this? I have no idea. I'd have to go back and talk to people. Um, and then it, at eleven twenty, it says cruise video. Kenny, mm -hmm. do you know what that refers to? So. When's the date? The 16th? So I think our first cruise video, I think, was in back in 14. So it was just, it would just be a recap of videos in the past of, you know, to inspire them to want to cruise qualify. So videos of, yeah, just a, videos hey, of pictures taken on the cruise? Yes, okay. from the year before. And a couple of lines down, it says book pop-ups. 2,500, 100 Carly's. Do you I know what that refers no to? I have no idea what that means. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, going a little bit further down at 12.50, it just says Deanne. Do you know what that refers to? Well, it says open time Q&A. Mm -hmm. would have started, and then I would have just closed it up before I had to leave and run out the door. Yeah. So I'd have not, I didn't do anything to do with these. Amy Ekstrom, visiting leader, she, they just took over, Mike and Peggy Gifford, whoever was there, were the visiting people there to teach and share. So you think you would have left at lunchtime mm -hmm. after that 12.50? I would have left so. right after lunch. Okay. Um, okay, you can put that one. Um, You've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 115, which is Bates number WA-AG-005781. Um, and this is a screen capture from Instagram, um, and it looks like the account is Deanne Lularo. Is that your Instagram That's account? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and here you've posted... Uh, at the Be On Purpose Tour here in Seattle with over 900 attendees so in tune with learning how to grow their businesses. Is that, did you post that? Yes. Um, and it looks like it's hard to read on the bottom, but it looks like it's uh, posted in November 15th, 2017. Does that sound right about when you were in Seattle for I, the I Be On Purpose event? I don't know. I mean, I probably. And the Beyond Purpose event um, in Seattle had over 900 attendees. And were those 900 attendees retailers? Yes. And prospective retailers? Possibly. And then it says, um, thank you at LuLaRoe Megan Parker, who is sharing success tips. She is so good at this. Hashtag LuLaRoe. Hashtag LuLaRoe Beyond Purpose Tour 2017. Who is LuLaRoe Megan Parker? She was a retailer of ours. She no longer a retailer? No. Do you recall what rank she was? Mentor. And what was she sharing? I have no idea. She and her husband had put together, I remember, they had put together a list of ways to talk to people. You know, where could they talk to people how could you go talk to people and I thought it was pretty good I mean I thought it was brilliant in fact is that I mean, what she was presenting on she was yeah yes what were some of the ways um, I have no idea I couldn't tell you unless I had a closer I, I mean I don't know but I do remember they were talking you know various ways um, 
down at the bottom it says, um, towards the bottom it says 7,490 views. Do you know what that refers to? No. Maybe they watched the video. I'm pretty impressed. I didn't know I had that many people interested in what I posted. I don't pay much attention to that. So, you now being handed what's been marked as Exhibit 116, which is base numbered WA-AG-005782, which is another screenshot from your Instagram account, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. And it looks like this is the same day. It's hard to read, November 15th, 2017. And you posted, um, your message says, these two at LuLaRoe, Jamie Bagley, at LuLaRoe, Danielle Melia, sharing how to be better at photos and social media posts. They're such great leaders. Did you write that? Yes. Who is Jamie Bagley? She's a retailer. Retailer? Is she still a retailer? Yes. And do you know what rank she was at the time? No. Do you know what rank she is now? Mentor. She's not qualifying. What does that mean? Well, she's a single girl, lost her dog. It's hard for her. It's hard for people to, so, when you're going through a tragedy. So what does not qualifying mean? Well, I mean, she's a mentor. I mean, you said she's not qualifying. What does that mean? Meaning that she works her business, but she works it the way she wants it to be. Does it mean she's not qualifying for I, um, a mentor bonus? Yeah, probably. But she achieved the rank of mentor previously, so she is still at the rank of the title of mentor. Yes. Okay. Once they hit it, they always stay where they're at. Even if they no longer qualify by having the right number of people in their downline. Okay. Um, and then uh, Danielle Amelia. Who is that? Retailer at the time. She's no longer with us. And do you, do you recall what her rank was? Um, I don't. And you posted that they are sharing how to be better at photos and social media posts. Do you recall what they were sharing? Yes. What were they sharing? They, so there was a camera on Instagram, I mean a camera and they would go at various they went out into the hallway and they showed how you could change an outfit from one way to another to go look more dressy and look more casual and it was really fun because we were all in the room and somebody else had a camera on their cell phone and they were showing see this is how it is standing on the stairs but look at if you look differently and you change the lighting you turn around here this is a different look and it was really cute it was really fun You can put that one aside. handed what's been marked as Exhibit 117, which is an email dated lor ba 0 from Deanne to Mandy Asher, dated uh, February 20th, 2017. Have you seen this email before? Mm -mm. Does it look familiar to you? Mm -mm. The from Deanne, that's you? Yes. And it looks like uh, you received an email from Mandy Asher and then responded to it. Who is Mandy Asher? I don't know. Is she a retailer? She could be, but it says it right there, Lula Roll Mandy Asher. Yeah. Or Mandy Rose at Gmail, so yes. Okay. And um, it looks like she is, um, she says, I'm hosting a Super Saturday this Saturday here in Spokane. Um, you had mentioned possibly being able to Zoom call in for a short message if it fit into your schedule. And then you reply, yes, please text me to remind me. Um, do you recall whether you called into that Super Saturday? I receive a lot of messages. So I'm sure 
I was on that. I don't know exactly, but I talked to a lot of people. Um, okay, you can put that aside. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 118, which is Bates numbered LLR-WA-0004267. And it looks like another um, text chat from your phone, this time with Julia, Ashley, and Lindsay. Uh, do you recognize this? Mm -hmm. um, and here you, you messaged, it's just a single message to Julia, Julia Ashley, and Lindsay. It, who is Julia here? She is Julia... She just got married. Landry. And she's a, a retailer? A retailer, yes. And um, what she was She happened the rank? to go up, I don't know. She could have been. She was great at styling. But she had come to me and asked, what do I do? I need, I want to build my team. I want to be someone that can lift and inspire other people. And then the, the second person, Ashley, who is that? Her name is Ashley Lautaha. She's a retailer. She's a mentor? Now, yeah. And then Lindsay Wheeler is also a retailer? Yes. And also a mentor? Yes. Okay. They don't get anything for signing people up. But we are always encouraging retailers to get out there and share why they love LuLaRoe. What do you mean they don't get anything for signing people up? Well, there's no bonus for signing people up. There's no sign and dine. They have to train people and get them started. You ask me if there's a, a fee or do the retailers get something for signing up people. No, they don't. But they do get bonuses based on their downline. Their sales. The work that they do to help alongside their people. Okay, you can put that aside. Have you ever um, asked retailers at a LuLaRoe event to tell the audience how much money they've made through LuLaRoe? Yes. Is that something you do often? No. Nope. When you've done it, why, why did you do it? They wanted to share how much their sales were. So they could see what they were how hard they were working. Have you ever told people at LuLaRoe events how much retailers are making? No. Okay, I'm gonna wanna play something, so I probably need to go off the record real, really quickly just to reset up her screen. Off the record, the time is 1.56 p.m. Going back on the record, the time is 1.57 p.m. Okay, so um, this is Exhibit 118. Uh, 19. Oh, 119? Apologies. I'll start over. This is Exhibit 119, um, and it, it is Bates number WA-AG-001049, and it is, a, well, it's a video, but it's pretty much an audio file, and for the record, I'm going to start playing it at one minute and 15 seconds. I'm just gonna play it for a little bit, we'll listen to it, and then I'll stop it and talk. Okay, welcome, 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 everybody. This is Deanne, and I am the owner of Ruberow. Um, I don't know how to mute this, but you can mute the audio so you can hear what I'm saying. Okay, okay. What's the date? Uh, the guy that you dealt with is out this 
once he's had a brand new baby. So we kind of gave him the day off uh, after we've given him a couple of weeks off. But um, so we'll get started. I have not done this call for about three years. I'm um, here because if you can, can you please mute your phone? That would be awesome. Um, mainly because we left it over to the retailers to do it for each and every one of the people that were joining the company. But I will tell you right now, things are just exploding. They're, they're so exciting, and things are happening, and we're thrilled and um, So, is that your voice on the recording? Yes. Okay. And um, on the recording, you're talking about not having done this call in a few years and starting it. Um, does that sound then that it's an opportunity call? And we talked looked earlier at an email where you had started back up opportunity calls after a long period of, of a break and having them. Does Probably. that sound right? Yeah, unless you have a date. Um, is it the same date as the. Um, so. Uh, Does it sound, that intro, does that uh, make you sound like it's an opportunity call or does it sound like a, another type of call to you? It could be anything. I make, I make calls with different groups. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Unless, I mean, maybe it is an opportunity call. Um, I'm going to skip forward and play starting at minute 16. Right Keep going. Nope. <clears throat> Too far. Oh, right there. Okay. I would make a call if I reached out to 25 retailers that are selling an average of 12 to 15, a 10 to 15,000 a month. I mean, yep. is, that, is that comprehensible or what? It's amazing to make that kind of money doing it part time, being a state owned mom, and maybe you have a situation where you're limited and what you can do, and being able to say, you know what, I'm going to go live and go online tonight after the kids go to bed, and I'm going to cut my kids in the bed, read them a story, and then as soon as they're asleep, I'm going to go live, and I'm going to sell, sell, sell. We've got some retailers that literally, their work time starts the minute their children close their eyes, and they will work, you know, three to four hours, and then they get up the next morning, and they have an assistant that comes in and puts together all the orders that they have put in bins that they sold, and it goes out that day, and they'll work it every day. I've got some retailers that have become really good at what they do, and they're only working two or three days a week. But remember, I don't know. So in that section, you, you mentioned reaching out to 25 retailers that are selling ten to 15000 a month. Do you recall doing that? Yep. And why were you um, telling people on this call that you knew of 25 retailers who were selling ten to 15000 a month. Because I know of retailers that are selling that much money a month. Why were you sharing that information? I don't know. I think it's inspiring. I wouldn't join a company if I didn't think I could make money. Were you sharing it as an example of uh, the amount of money that could be made? Yes. No, that but, is being made. Um, so now I'm going to continue on from here, 1705. What your goals are. I don't know. Do you, are you getting involved in this company because you're hungry and you want to make some extra money? I'm here to tell you that we want to see, and I will tell you the largest number. I mean, I could blow your, your uh, minds away by telling you that we have over a hundred people that make a lot of money, like between fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars a month, and I'm not lying. And then we have people a, a big. So there, you're you're uh, describing over a hundred people who make between fifty thousand and five hundred thousand a month at that time. At that time, and yes. when was that? Do you recall? Mm -mm. Okay. Um. And was that true that you had 100, 100, over 100 retailers making between 50000 and 500000 a month? Yes. And why were you sharing that on this call? 
because it's important for people to know what the possibilities are. Okay, I'm going to continue just a little bit longer. This is starting at 1736. So there you're talking about the biggest group making between 5000 and 10000 a month. There's a big, there was a big group there. Mm -hmm. What does that refer to? What do you mean? Uh, th that group, does that have Just, a name? No. Okay. Just the biggest group of retailers are making between mm -hmm. that, uh, between five and 10000 They were selling between five and $10,000 a month. So what do you mean selling? Is there a distinction between selling and making? No, same thing. Were you talking here about five to ten thousand? Is how much they were bringing in the profit they were making? Yep. Okay. Yes. And why were you sharing that on this call? Would you join or get a job if you didn't know how much you were going to be making? Would you apply? You wouldn't apply. You wouldn't go after a career if you only made such and such, but you needed to make a much higher bracket. You would go after a career if you were driven and you needed to make more money. You would go after a career that could bring in more money. Is it fair to say you wanted the listeners on the call to know the potential the for making money? Mm -hmm. Because I know personally, when I was selling 1,200 maxi skirts a week, mm -hmm. and my profit was 15 to 20 dollars a skirt, I know how much money that is available. So, okay. um, I would never say, "Oh, just try it. You might." <laughs> Um, which is Bates numbered WA-AG-000830 and I'm going to pull that up video up here. Um, okay. So I'm going to play again I'm going to play a section for you. What day is this? So that is your voice? Yes. That's you. Okay. Do you recall what this is? Not specifically. That's why I asked you what the date was. Um, and that I am, I am not sure of. So let, I'm going to move forward to minute eight, eight minutes and 50 seconds. Eight minutes and 43 seconds.
uh, you got to do some pop-ups in order for you to get to know the site. And that's the only way you're going to get to know how you have to avoid any returns from sending out a lot of mailers out, okay? You want to be able to be really comfortable in what you're doing and talking to people into and being able to get to know their sizing, okay? Um, but a pop-up really does give you a lot of experience. It helps you to develop a good customer rapport and be able to develop that long longevity in customers that are coming back to you time and time again because you're getting in the habit of selling more, ordering every single week, and uh, making that relationship, okay? Third instant gratification is for you as a fashion consultant. That's what you are when you sign a contract. Um, when you get things going, we'll have you start out with about 300 to 300, 300 to 400 pieces. Um, we do have uh, different packages. We have three different packages, one, two, and three, obviously. Um, our ad like I said, our average consultants doing about three to five parties a week. They're selling an average of, at a pop-up, 20 to 35 pieces. If you're making about $20 profit on each item, uh, I'm taking on average because you're going to make $35 on a million dresses. Uh, the Sarah Cardigans, you're making $40. But of course, leggings are about a $10 profit, $10 to $15 profit, okay? Um, and so if you're doing that, you're selling that much, you're going to make about three to 5000 on average. I say on average. You know, you're going you're gonna to have to get yourself going and practice and, and everything. And I often say to our consultants, you're going to want to do our program that we have, what is called a 72-hour game plan. So there you're talking about an um, average of three to five parties a week. Mm -hmm. um, where did you get that number? Oh, gosh, I was doing four, eight parties a day. Three to five parties a week is nothing. But and that's, I mean, that's about what people were doing when you talk about our first retailers and then the, the next group comes in and then the next group, meaning when people as this business was growing. That's the reports they were giving back to us about, oh my gosh, Deanne, I'm, I'm working three to five parties. Some girls were working six to ten parties a week. Some of them worked 16. They said, if you Deanne can do 24 parties in five days, then why can't I do 16 in seven days? These are people that needed to make money. I don't know who's listening. I don't know what their status is. I don't know what their drive is. I don't know what their need is. But by darn, if they're going to get on the phone, they're going to want to know how much can I make. Don't just tell me to buy product. Tell me what I can do. How do I bring in this kind of money? What, what will I be able to do? So um, going back to the three to five parties a week, mm -hmm. um, how did you know that that was what the average retailer was doing? Because I, I did it myself. And then I was talking to the, the retailers at the time. I had a very, very close relationship with the first two to three hundred uh, retailers. I was talking to them myself before they even, that's why we decided to increase the, um, we started with a, a business plan, a, a comp plan to pay them because I was getting so overwhelmed talking to them, cheering them on, telling them how awesome it is. Did you ever review any um, data that showed that retailers were doing three to five uh, parties a week on average? No, they're just telling me. We didn't have the, we didn't have the technology, at the time. It was all people te sharing their testimony. And then you say um, that in three to five parties a week, on average, a retailer could make three thousand to five thousand. They were, yeah. And was that uh, three thousand to five thousand gross or net? Check the form. I would, uh, it depend on what they sold. So it could have been uh, what they sold. If they sold total retail, 3000 there were a lot of retailers that made way more than that. I mean, that's small compared to what people were doing. I mean, they were, like, hustling. When you say three to 5000 doing uh, three to five parties a week, do you mean that that is how much a retailer would profit or how much money they would bring oh, they, in? A lot of them were profiting. The, the words speak for themselves. Yeah. Go, they go were ahead. profiting. A lot of them were profiting. And there were a lot of women that couldn't do that much, and they knew that, and I knew that. And how and did you know that them. that was how much a retailer could bring in on average? The three to five thousand? That's what they told me. 
they would call me with tears and crying and say, Deanne, I just can't believe it. Did you ever review any data that um, backed up that there were three to, uh, an average retailer was bringing in three to $5,000 a week? Mm, the data is what they told me. We didn't have data. We didn't have computer systems that told us. We didn't, we hardly, barely had anything other than emails back in, you know, 13, 14, and 15. This I've handwritten the Bates number on because it doesn't print with it. Um, and this is 121. Zero, zero, oh. 121. 121. So exhibit 121, which is Bates number 005606, and is a video. So I'm going to queue it up here. So I'm going to start playing at, at the beginning and play for a little bit. Is that, to make that louder? Yeah, is there, it's on 100. So, yeah, it's on 100. Um, is, is that you in the video uh, pacing in the front? It is. Okay. And, it, uh, and for the record, it's a video showing um, some women sitting on chairs um, in a row. You're in front, and in the back are the words, be the light. Do you know where this video is from? I think it's a leadership or something. Um, I would think that was one of the themes. Was be the light a theme of convention? I know. I no. I think this was a leadership. It was not a convention. It would have been where leaders go. Okay. Um, and uh, looks to be a, a panel. Are those retailers behind you? They are. Okay. And um, who selected those retailers to be on the panel? They're the top sellers of the company at that time. They selected <coughs> themselves by their accomplishments. Do you recall when the Be the Light event happened? Mm -mm. Probably 2015 or 16. You didn't get that off of this video? The date? Uh, it may be in the... In, in the uh, metadata I'm not sure okay um, and uh, what was the purpose of this panel well the leaders had asked please 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 can we hear from them we want to know what they're doing we'd like to ask them questions okay. people want to hear from successful people so I'm going to move forward to minute, five minutes and 15 seconds. Okay. Ashley is from St. George, Utah. 
Ashley Lataj from Washington, Seattle area. Lisa Jones is from upstate New York in Roch uh, by Rochester. Okay, where are you from? I am uh, from Maryland. Um, my last <laughs> my last check uh, was two hundred fifty thousand, and I do about twelve to thirteen thousand um, in sales every month. I am in Salt Lake City, or Riverton, Utah, and our last check was three hundred and seven thousand. I I can't even say it. It like blows my mind. And our um, personal sales were about eighteen, a little over eighteen thousand. Corona, California, a uh, little bit. Getting close to three and a half years, and um, twelve to eighteen thousand dollars in sales, and one hundred and eighty-six thousand um, dollars. So I live in South Jordan, Utah, and my last check was one hundred and seventy-one thousand, and my sales usually range between twelve thousand to eighteen thousand a month. Um, I'm in Laguna Beach, California. And uh, my last check was 68000 and my sales range anywhere from fifteen to 20000 a month. Oh, my gosh. That's... Oh, and then this month marks my four-year anniversary. Um, and I have to point out, too, that Kim and Sadie and I live within, like, a few streets of each other, so it doesn't necessarily matter where you are. But um, $20,000 in sales last month, biggest month ever because we pushed. And my last check was $130,000 and first consultant. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me how many consultants. Um, so we have almost 40 consultants. I am, where am I at? Like three and a half years in. Almost four years right in there. And we sell between 15 and 18,000 a month. Amazing. I love that. I love that. Okay. Um, why did you ask these retailers what their sales checks and bonus checks were? Why not? I love it. It's inspiring and it gives people excitement. Now, when they were talking about their, their monthly checks, they're referring to their bonus checks? Yes. Okay. And when they're talking about sales, what are they referring to? Their sales. Is that their profit? Is your their understanding? Their total sales. So their total sales before, before profit? Yeah. And they were discussing their monthly sales, right? Yes. And the, the bonus checks that they were referring to, that was also monthly? Maybe, I think they may have, it might have been their biggest check that they'd ever received. But uh, bonus checks are paid monthly? Yes. <coughs> So, correct me if I'm wrong, but everyone in that video is making more in bonus checks than they are in sales, correct? At that time, yes. And why were they making more in bonus checks than sales? I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they helped a lot of people to help them make money. Was this video... Um, Posted by LuLaRoe anywhere? I have no idea. Okay. Can I step out and use the ladies' room? I drank a lot of water because sure, I had a Go bad on. headache. Off the record, the time is 2.23 p.m. So I drank water and now it's just, oh, sorry. I'll just, ah, oh, you're Going back on the record, the time is 2.30 p.m. Um, okay, so you've uh, been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 122 which is Bates number WA-AG-001046. Have you seen this document before? No, I'm curious where you got it. Um, it is uh, at the top, It's uh, that's the LuLaRoe logo. Um, and it says, want to earn full-time income for part-time work, ask me how. 
Is, is that phrase familiar to you, full-time no. income for part-time work? Not, not to me. Um, okay, so you, I've you never said this. Is what I'm saying. I mean, you can put it aside. I'm I'm wondering if one of the retailers have, has made that, which they do. They make lots of stuff. Um, if if a retailer had created this um, exhibit 122, uh, would that be okay with Lularoe? No. Why not? Because you're. I mean, they can share something that's their personal, but not post it and print it. You know, um, although it's true, I mean, Mark says it all the time. I don't say it, but Mark says it because he knows how to do the whole math about it. But I... When you say Mark says it all the time, you mean... Well, you interviewed him, or somebody interviewed him last couple of days ago, and he clarified this phrase, earn full-time income for part-time work. And let's just make sure we don't talk each, over okay. each other. So uh, when you said Mark says it all the time, are you refer referring to full-time income for part-time work? He doesn't say it all the time. He has said it. And then um, now we're going to go to Exhibit 45. to make you dig. I should have given you a warning. <coughs> and so for the record, Exhibit 45 is Bates number WA-AG-001179. Have you seen this document before? No. Are you familiar with the Find a Retailer feature on LulaRose website? No. Um, I, are you familiar with um, a feature that allows a user to go to the website and find retailers near a certain zip code? I've heard. Have you ever used it? No. <coughs> Do you know why LuLaRoe developed this feature? Probably with all the excitement in the air and being able to buy a size two, or si to go shopping with your size two friend and you're a three XL, people got excited about it and wanted to know where can I find a retailer near me. And so this was a nice feature. Retailers were asking, please, please, can you put us on a map? so that they can find us, because we don't sell direct to consumer. The retailers do. Do you know whether this was something that prospective retailers used? I have no idea. Were all retailers um, listed sort of in the database behind the uh, find a retailer function? I do not know all the details about how this goes about, what the process is, or Were, um, you said you weren't on the, those calls, were you never on the President's Council calls? No, I wouldn't say never. I would say rarely. I would say maybe the first year, maybe three calls, like three months. And then I just got busier and decided it was okay to let them do what they needed to do and they would, you know, report what they felt was important that some changes needed to do. If there was, was any changes, I don't know. And then because they, the reports were, it wasn't productive, I was like, I'm not, I don't, not gonna, I'm not gonna spend time in my time. Were there ever meetings for the President's Council in there person? There was maybe one or two. There was one in the very beginning, right after convention. We met them one time in Salt Lake City, and then there was one time we had everybody come into California. That was about it. Um, when was that Salt Lake City meeting? 
You Maybe was, September. It was. Uh, I remember it was two months after convention. Convention is when they got announced. It was a big surprise. And they would get announced in end of July is when convention is usually. So I remember that one is, was in September because it was fairly cold, getting cold fall weather in Salt Lake City. And do you recall what year that is? that was? Mm -hmm. You said four years ago, so would that have been 2015? It could have been 2015 or 16. 14, 15, and 16 of that. I don't know, gosh. Don't guess. Yeah, that's okay. Um, when there was a in that in-person meeting in Salt Lake City, uh, did Lularo pay for the President's Council members to attend? Yes. So paid for their travel? Yes. They didn't get paid to be there. They just got their hotel and we went shopping because the hotel was attached to a mall and they bought what they wanted, on, not on my dime. Uh, were President's Council members compensated in any other way? No. It was all about, are you willing to serve? And that was a huge honor to them. But then it became not so. President's Council. I don't know. So you're the president, correct? <laughs> they say I am. <laughs> what do you I mean? Don't, I don't know. I think I'm not a titles person, so. What do you mean they say I am? People, people say, oh, you're the president. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not the president. But. Why do you think you're not the president? I don't know. I think that's a pretty big, serious role. I'm not that serious. But you're listed on uh, company documents as the president, correct? Yes. handed what's been marked as Exhibit 123, which is a document Bates numbered LLR-WA-0004266665 and is a uh, record of a text chat from your iPhone dated May 26, 2015. Does that sound correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and here it looks like you are um, texting five participants um, looking at that list, are they all retailers? Yes. Okay. Something um, within LuLaRoe called the Art Council? Is that a term you never, never heard? heard of that. Earlier you mentioned a, a meeting following, I think you said following convention in Salt Lake City um, for the President's Council? Mm-hmm. How long was that meeting? Oh, I don't recall. A couple hours. People flew in for it? Yes. Did they stay overnight? Yes, they wanted to. It was fun. So the meeting, a couple hours, plus some social time. A lot so of social time. How long did people stay? I don't know. I don't recall. One night, two nights? Probably just one night. Did all of the President's Council attend? Yes. And 
and I think you said that meeting was following convention. Am yes. I remembering right? Um, it was in September. I remember. Yeah. Um, when was it scheduled? I have no idea. Probably oh. at convention in July. They made a decision when it was good for them. Well, a leadership meeting in um, Arizona in August <coughs> 2016. I don't. Have you ever heard the term influencers used with respect to LuLaRoe retailers? Say it again. Have you ever heard the term influencers used with respect to LuLaRoe retailers? No. Has that been a term you've used ever? I think we all influence people. I don't know. I don't recall when I've used it or if I've used it. Have you ever had in-person leadership meetings uh, for small groups beyond just the President's Council? Maybe. Teams asked to meet with me. Have you ever asked um, retailers to personally pay to onboard anyone in the queue? No. Have you ever encouraged them to do so? No. Um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about um, ordering LuLaRoe products. When retailers place an order for clothes, are they allowed to choose what they're ordering? Yes. Um, are they allowed to choose the patterns? No. Okay. So what are they allowed to choose? Their sizes and quantities and styles. Has that always been the case? Yes. Have they ever been able to choose patterns? No. Not unless they're pulling an order. What does pulling an order mean? That, like we've had on occasion uh, that the, they could come and pull an order. Do you mean uh, go to the they warehouse? They go to the warehouse. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Is that anyone who goes to the warehouse could pull their own order? Um... I think they had to sign up for it. So there's special events? Yes. At what events are uh, retailers allowed to pull an order? They did it a couple of years ago. They did it. They've done it before, but as the company got bigger and bigger, it was not – they asked us not to do it because it – caused more stress on them to pull orders. They said, this is too hard. I like it better when I can just place it, open the box, and be surprised. The retailers asked not to do it? Yep. Which retailers? I don't know. Did anyone ask you personally? No. Just that when I had asked them how awesome they are, they, about that event, they were like, oh my gosh. I don't ever want to do that again. Who's, who told you that? I don't, I, just people, randomly. Do you recall any specific names? No. About how many events has Little Row had where uh, retailers were allowed to pull orders? I don't recall. When was the last one? I don't recall. Were they events that all retailers were invited to or events that only retailers of a certain rank were invited to? I wasn't in charge of that.
been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 124, which is uh, bait stamped LLR-WA 00005941. And it's an email from LuLaRoe where fashion meets comfort to Jordan. Um, subject is uh, LuLaRoe Weekly Home Office Update Notes, March 15th, 2016. And that's also the date of the email. Um, have you seen this before? Mm -hmm. So this is another, I think we, we saw a different one earlier, a weekly home office update email. And in it, there's a message um, that's headed Deanne, president and founder. Is that a message you wrote? Not me. Is it a message that someone sent on your behalf? Yes. Okay. And I think I'm going to go through one more exhibit and then probably be at a good place for a break, too. Okay. So, we'll, we'll get some air in a minute. I know I'm surprised there's not like a air conditioning in here. It looks like there's vents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cage is being exit, though. Yeah, exactly. An exit. Something for the rats to crawl through. Shoot. You're sick before we've got you up in an emergency. I'm afraid I would not be able to get up there. <laughs> so you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 126, which for the record is LLR-WA 00040808. There's an email um, from Stacy Valley to a variety of people dated Monday, June 19th, 2017. Subject Q call and coaches call. Um, and then if you turn, the next page is a transcript from a LuLaRoe coaches call dated May, or sorry, dated Monday, June 19th, 2017. Have you seen this before? Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with uh, LuLaRoe's practice of having um, certain calls transcribed? You mean for? The hard of hearing? Yes. Is that people? Yes. Okay. Um, and so does this look to you to be a transcription or a captioning of a, of a coach's call? I have never seen them give me that, a transcriptionist. I've never. So it's not their normal practice to provide you with the transcriptions afterwards? Well, I'm sure it is, but I don't. I don't open up my emails. Mm -hmm. Um, so looking at the, the transcription on the first page, uh, the second full paragraph, it says DN and it starts, hey, everyone. Does that look to be a transcription of your comments on the call? Yes. Okay. Okay, I think we can take a break. Going off the record, the time is 3.15 p.m. <coughs> Going back on the record, the time is 3.30 p.m. Does LuLaRoe have any policies regarding social media use by retailers? I am sure. I mean, I would assume we do. I do not know for sure. Does LuLaRoe have any policies regarding um, what retailers should be allowed to post on social media regarding... Uh, the amount of money they make through LuLaRoe. Again, I am sure they do. I'm not sure exactly what it says. Um, we talked earlier today about your Instagram. Do you follow any retailers on Instagram? I do. Do you look at what they post? No, I look at their pictures. The pictures that they post? Yes. Yeah. Um, does LuLaRoe have any policies regarding <laughs> I'll start again. Uh, does Luro have any policies regarding um, the use of social media by retailers to recruit 
potential retailers for their downline? Again, I would have to look and see. handed what's been marked as Exhibit 127, which is Bates number WA-AG-000854 and is a printout from a uh, website called lulagirlsblessitup.com. Have you seen this before? No. Do you know what Team Bless It Up is? Mm -mm. Have you ever heard of LulaRoe Team called Bless It Up? No. Do you know who Jess Walsh is? No. If you could turn to the third page, um, there's some photos there, and I think, um, just for the record, this is ending in Bates number 856. The middle photo at the top, that appears to be you. Is that you? Yes. And who are you with in that photo? Sindel. Who is Sindel? She is a retailer. And uh, you're holding some sort of envelope. Do you know what you're holding? No. Then if you could flip two more pages to um, actually to the, to the next page, ending in Bates number 857. Mm -hmm. There's um, another series of photos. And at the top, um, there's, a, in, again, top middle, there's a photo of someone and another uh, that appears to be you again? Yes. Is that you? Okay. Um, and who are you with in that photo? Um, it looks like, is it Lindsay Wheeler? And Lindsay Wheeler is a retailer? Yes. And she's a mentor, correct? Yes. Okay. And then on the um, last page, ending in Bates number 858, um, there's another series of photos. And again, at the top in the middle, there's a photo of four people, and that appears to be on the left of that photo, you and Mark. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. And in the photo, uh, who, who are the other two people in the photo? Kim and Doug Roylance. And are they retailers? Yes. Both of them? She is. She is. And uh, the four of you are, are posed in front of a check. What is that check? It was what they put together, and they asked us to turn around and get in the picture quickly. I have no idea what this check really is without being able to see it and know when and why, but they asked us to post, pose in this picture. Kim and Doug did? Yes. Who, who created the check? Kim and Doug did. Does the uh, check represent a bonus payment they received? I have no idea. It looks like a lot of money. I don't think it's a bonus check. The check, uh, at the top left hand of the check, it has, it says LuLaRoe and has the LuLaRoe logo. Is that right? Yes. Is posting a picture like this um, online with a check that purports to be from LuLaRoe uh, consistent with LuLaRoe's policy? No. Why not? Because that's something we just don't do. Posting checks is something we don't do? Why not? I, we encourage people to be responsible with their own finances, but that's something that doesn't happen. Posting checks? If you had seen this at the time it was posted, would you have done anything about it? Oh, yes. What would you have done? I would have referred it to our legal counsel and asked them to seek guidance 
Would you have uh, taken any actions with respect to Kim and Doug? Me, no. Would anyone else at LuLaRoe have? Actually, I don't know. They probably would have been asked to take it down. And why would they have been asked to take it down? It's a pretty big size check. Is, is the size of the check the objection? No, it's advertising. The posting of the check is advertising? Yes. Why do you think it's advertising? I don't know quite sure, but in my opinion, I think it's important for them to share their personal experiences and let people know what they can do and what the possibilities are. Isn't that what the check is doing? Mm -mm. Why not? Because oh, I don't think it tells what it is and what's it for and how much is it and what does it represent. There's a whole lot of things in here that are unanswered. Okay, you can put that one aside. <coughs> what's been marked as Exhibit 128, which is Bates number WA-AG-000833. This is a printout from uh, Facebook um, from a page called LuLaRoe Kim Roy Lance. Is that the same Kim that we were just speaking about? Yes. yes. Okay. Have you seen this before? No. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a moment to take a look at it. Asking the lady that doesn't have good eyes. Anyway. Okay, so um, on the left side of this post, there's a, a picture of five women and the LuLaRoe logo and below it it says be part of one of the fastest growing companies join today. Uh, is is that uh, an asset that LuLaRoe has developed? I don't know. Um, or is that um, imagery, the photos look like something that the... The photos are but she could have entered that herself. Okay. So the photo at least at the top LuLaRoe developed? Yes. Okay. Um, okay wait, I'm not going to confirm that because I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Um, <coughs> then on the right hand side, uh, Kim has posted, do you want to be home with your children mm -hmm. when they need you and attend all of their programs and activities? Would an extra thousand or two thousand a month make a difference for you? Are you looking for a way to add extra dollars, three dollar signs to your family's budget? Do you want to, do you want the freedom to choose the hours you work and have unlimited potential in regards to income? Owning your own LuLuero business provides, affords you financial freedom and so much more. If you do one boutique a week, total time away from family is about three to four hours per boutique or 12 to 20 hours per month away from home. You, ex you can expect to earn an average of $1,000 per month. Mm -hmm. Do two boutiques a week and you can expect to earn an average of $2,000 per month. Plus, you help women feel good about who they are and change lives. You will become part of an amazing group of women and make lifetime friendships. Earn full-time income for part-time work and love what you do. Message me for more info on this amazing opportunity. Is that post consistent with LuLaRoe policy for retailers? I don't think so. How, how so? Oh, well, I don't... I mean, this is Kim. This is what she's posting. I don't know. I mean, everybody has their own story. Kim did 16 parties a week. I don't know what Kim was thinking. 
and I'm not asking you what Kim was thinking. I'm I don't asking know. you if this is consistent with LuLaRoe policy. Ask the answer. I don't believe I've gotten an answer. Is yeah, it consistent? It was two questions ago. You can read it back if you want. Is this consistent with LuLaRoe policy? Asked an answer. No. How, how is it not consistent? I don't know. I'd have to look at the policy and actually dissect it. If you had seen this at the time it was posted, would you have done anything about it? No. When she says um, you can do one to two boutiques a week to earn 1000 to 2000 a month, does that sound accurate to you? Yes. If they're working hard and they've built up their clientele, the possibilities are bigger than that. Okay, put that one aside. Thank you. Now they turned on the air conditioning. <coughs> My hands are freezing. It's all good. It's good. I like it. <laughs> so you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 129, okay. which is Bates numbered WA-AG-000879 and is a um, tweet from uh, LuLaRoe Guy and Jill. Do you know who that is? No. Uh, do you recognize? I know it's hard to see the, the picture. The, um, the you mean here? Uh, no, up, up here at the top. Yeah, Lulu, I don't know who that is. Okay. Um, there's a, a text to the tweet, and then there's a picture. And at the picture at the bottom, it says hashtag Team Superheroes. Do you know what that is? No. Have, are you familiar with the LuLaRoe team called Team Superheroes? No. Yeah. Um, the text of the tweet says, do you know an average LuLaRoe consultant makes $48,000 a year? Uh, does that sound accurate to you? No, I don't know. I'd have to look at all the financials. Is this tweet consistent with the policy? I don't know. I would have to look at the policies and procedures. If you had seen this tweet at the time it was made, would you have done anything about it? No. You can put that one aside. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 130, which is Bates number WA-AG-000835. And this looks to be, a, a, this is a tweet um, from Jennifer Akers um, at LuLaRoe Gen A. Do you know who that is? I don't. And the tweet says, want to make a full, hashtag full-time income working, hashtag part-time. I have a spot on my team for you, hashtag LuLaRoe, and then there's a link. Um, is this tweet consistent with LuLaRoe policy? No. How so? Well... It's her policy, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea what she's thinking. And again, I'm not asking you what she's thinking. I'm asking you, is it consistent with LuLaRoe policy? Um, again, I would have to look at the policies and procedures. If you had seen this tweet at the time it was made, would you have done anything about it? I probably would have, only because I don't know what her numbers are. And I think it is, I think it's not accurate for her to make a blanketed statement like that. Okay, you can put that one aside.
also you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 131, which is Bates number WA-AG-000839 and is a um, capture of a YouTube page from by LuLaRoe Meg B titled One Year Review Over 200K First Year in LuLaRoe Business. Have you seen this before? No. Okay. Um, if you could read um, the, the text uh, about halfway down the page where it says published on February 22nd, 2015 and says a one year LuLaRoe Business Review. LuLaRoe Meg B retailed over 200K uh, in her first year. What a blessing. Meg talks about some tips that have worked for her and how to be a part of a fast-growing team. She is still taking on new consultants. Learn how to have massive growth in your sales and run a successful LuLaRoe business. Contact me at LuLaRoeMegB at gmail.com for a no-obligation interview. And just for the record, I think you said 2015 and it reads 17. Oh, okay. Oh, 2017. Um, is this uh, posting on YouTube consistent with LuLaRoe's policy? I would think not. How so? I, well, but I, I feel like people have a right to share their own testimony. If this is her testimony, unless I know if it was false, then I would have a problem with it. I don't know if this is false. If it were true that uh, this retailer made uh, retailed over two hundred thousand dollars in her first year, would it be okay to, for her to post this? I don't know. I personally would say yes. And would it be okay for her to post that in connection with a um, comment that consultants could contact her to become a member of her team? Well, people that did that, they don't have a right to take that much business from everybody else. There were people that were advised, you know, to, to go off YouTube. You're capturing business the wrong way. Instead, you're not, it's not a people-to-people -people business. So we encourage Lularo retailers to face to face have conversations. This isn't face to face. <clears throat> so in my opinion, I would say it needs to come down. And it needs to come down because it's not face to face. Yes. There's not a real conversation about what is reality for that retailer or that perspective person. They're they're not going to get the full story. Which retailers were advised to go off of YouTube? I have no idea. You mentioned earlier that there, just a few minutes ago. Uh, people were. I mean, I, we heard that that was one of the things that people were doing, and I think that they were little by little reached out to. I don't know. I'm assuming. I have no idea. I don't do, I don't do YouTube. Uh, who at LuLaRoe reached out to them? I have no idea. How would we find out? Ask legal. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 132, which is Bates number WA AG 00850, and it's a printout from a website called lulateamfabulous.com. Are you familiar with a team called Lula Team Fabulous? No. Okay. And um, This is titled Potential LuLaRoe Consultants FAQ. Um, is it consistent with LuLaRoe Lula policy for LuLaRoe retailers to post FAQs for potential consultants online? I have no idea.
<clears throat> Looking at the second page towards the bottom, um, there's a question, what is the profit mar margin? And the answer is 45 to 60 percent depending on the item. Is that accurate? No. Um, moving to the next page, ending in Bates number 852. Which one? Uh, ending in ba Bates number 852. Okay. okay. Uh, about halfway down, there's a question, how much does the top paid consultants make? And the answer is the top consultant sold $60,000 in January. The top team building consultant got a monthly bonus check of $159,000. You would be surprised to learn how many consultants make a significant income. Is that accurate? No. I have no idea when this was, since 17. I would have to get the monthly reports, but this isn't from us. Is a post like this online um, by a retailer consistent with LuLaRoe policy? No. If you had seen this at the time that it was posted, would you have done anything about it? Yes. What would you have done? Ask them to ask the legal to reach out to them. Would you have reached out to them directly? No. So now you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 133, which is Bates number WA-AG-000950 and is a, a tweet from someone named LuLaRoe Teresa B. Do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. Have you seen no. this before? No. Um, and in the tweet, she has a series of hashtags and then um, an image that says, uh, mm -hmm. says Team Superheroes. And we talked about that. You don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, join our team, $57,571.27 in June bonuses. Is a post like this consistent with LuLaRoe policy? No. How so? We don't post that around money. Don't post, sorry, around we, money? We don't post posts like that. Is a post like this by a retailer consistent right. with LuLaRoe policy? No. Sorry. Um, in the top, there's a series of hashtags, and the last is, uh, it says hashtag because of LuLaRoe. Are you familiar with that hashtag? I see it, yes. Do you know what it means? No. <coughs> I would assume that is what it says. What does it mean to you? Because of Lou LaRoe and the hard work that I make, I am having more time with my family, making my own goals and setting them and having the opportunity to do what I want to do on my own time. Work in my business every day. Side. They're all the same. I'm confused. Oh, do you have multiple copies? Oh, sorry, yes. Okay. Yes. I think that's that's fine. They're all in there. She only got two likes. That's sad. You want them all together? Yes. Okay. Oh wow. <coughs> I don't even know if these people are in the business still. what's been marked as Exhibit 134, uh, which is 
States number WA-AG-000882. And there's a YouTube uh, post from Erica D. House. Do you know who that is? No. The title of the post says, How much can you make with LuLaRoe? I sold 25000 my first month. Is posting a statement like that consistent with LuLaRoe policy? Again, I would have to look at all the policies and review them, but I would assume no. Why not? Because it's on YouTube. It's not face to face. Would it be consistent with uh, LuLaRoe policy for a retailer to tell prospective retailers that they made 25000 in the first month if that was face-to-face? -face? If they did it, they have every right to make whatever statements they can. This is their... We don't want people to lie. <coughs> Okay, put that one aside. <coughs> so you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 135. This is one I only um, it is Bates number WA-AG-000891, which is a YouTube post by LuLaRoe Tiffany Cook. Do you know who that is? I do. Who is Tiffany Cook? She is a LuLaRoe retailer. Is she a current retailer? Yes. And what rank is she? I think she's a mentor now. And this was a post in February of 2016. Do you know what rank she was then? I don't think she... I don't know. I don't have a clue. I don't know exactly when each of them... Okay. I'm going to pull up... Actually... So I'm entering into the record as Exhibit 136, a video, Bates number WA-AG-000890. I'm going to pull up that video. I'm going to play just a portion of it, but let me make sure you know. For the record, I'm starting at the very beginning, zero, zero. Oh, I've never seen this. Hey everyone, my name is Tiffany Cook, if you don't know me. Um, LuLaRoe, Tiffany Cook. And today I wanted to make a video for you guys so that you could know the potential um, income with LuLaRoe. So, um, a lot of people ask you know, how much do I make? What's the average to make um, selling in the row? And really, it varies. So I kind of just wanted to give you a breakdown of it as well. So I'm going to talk about two different aspects of LuLaRoe. So how you can make money doing the business side of LuLaRoe and how much money you can make selling LuLaRoe. Because I really feel like it's different. Um, there's really two businesses within one business. So, let's start with selling. How much can you make selling LuLaRoe? So, I'm going to pause it there. 
Um, in this video, she's talking about two ways to make money, the business side and the selling side. And in the business side, it seems like she's referring to um, uh, <coughs> bonus checks. Have you ever heard bonus checks referred to as the business side of LuLaRoe? No. Okay. I'm going to skip forward. And this is... It's not separate. And this is... Uh, Tiffany Cook, you, you said you meant you knew the name, and now that you've seen the video, this is Tiffany Cook? Yes. Okay. Um, now I'm going to skip forward to 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Once I started selling online, my sales went from, I think, 6000 to 10000 to 12000 to 15000 to 16000 And I don't know if I've broken 17000 or not, but around there, the 17000 mark gross sales monthly all online yes you can sell all online if you want to yes you can make that kind of money doing all in homes as well if you just wanted to have parties with friends and their people's friends and and bring your clothing to those parties you can do whatever works for you i promise you that okay so that's how much i make gross now i have a cool little spreadsheet that i can so in there, um, or pause there, um, in the video, Tiffany is talking about how much she has made in gross sales um, through selling LuLaRoe products. Is uh, making those kind of statements on social media consistent with LuLaRoe policy? I don't know exactly what the policy is, but in my opinion, it's her personal testimony. Is it okay with you personally? No. Why not? Because I think she captured way too much business. Instead of people meeting it, you know, they... She had a lot of people sign up, and I think that it was hard on her. I don't think she could keep up. I mean, she's doing great, but it was hard on her, I think. And it's not the right, appropriate way. I didn't build a business going online. I built it one on one. When you say she um, captured too many people, what do you mean? Well, not everybody has a video and they put it on social media like that. So if somebody Googles Lula Rowe and her face comes up, they're going to go to her to sign up. And it's, I feel like it's not, it's not the appropriate way of doing business, in my opinion. Do you mean that she um, had too many people in her downline? Yes. Why is that a problem? It's only a problem if you're trying to take more for yourself. If, um, if she had, uh, Tiffany had built her, her downline. The organic way. The organic way is meaning, do you mean face to face? Yes. Okay. She had built her downline and had the same exact number of people in her downline, but it had been all through meeting face to face rather than YouTube. Would you have been okay with that? Yes. <clears throat> this is a lot. I think this is a little bit of doing it the easy way and I it's okay, I guess, to do the easy way, but I think that it's not fair to the the woman that is not in the ability to do that. And would it be okay with you if someone built their downline by telling prospective retailers face-to-face uh, -face, uh, what they make gross sales in a month? Yes. Why is that I okay with you? Get, I wouldn't. It's like you going to law school. You wouldn't go to law school if you didn't know what the possibilities were to make money. <coughs> you know, it's like anything. I'm going to show you just one other section here. And for the record, I'm and starting. And again, I have never seen this video, so I have no idea. Starting at 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay, break it down. How much does that mean? Side. I'm sorry, it's about business side. 
um, I was laying around $1,000 checks, and I was like, shut up, there's no way that I could ever make $5,000 worth of just a bonus, just all profit, like, there's no way that I can make that, like, that's, that's a nice dream, but it's not a, a realistic goal, well, I kid you not, like, as soon as I hit trainer, my bonus check went up from 1000 to, I think, like, 3000 and then 4000 and then 5000 and then 6000 <laughs> here I go again, <laughs> and then 7000 and from 7000 it went to 14000 mm. and then, now that I'm coach, I don't even want to tell you how much it's going to jump up. It's going to jump up over 10000 Fuck that. It's going to be over 20000 Like, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe you don't want to hear these things. I, I just, I feel, I feel so grateful. So in this section, she's talking about her bonus checks. Um, does that sound right to you? Not, I don't know her numbers. Oh, I, yeah. That's a little over but exaggerated. Just, <laughs> I um, was like, well, so obviously, I, I don't, I don't know. Do they remove them off of face? And uh, can you move remove videos off of YouTube? So, um, in the just to be clear, I just want to make sure we have a clear record. I'm not asking you whether her num the numbers she said are accurate, because I know you don't have that data in front of you. But in the de in this last section of the video I played, she's talking about what her bonus checks were, correct? Right. Okay. And um, is telling prospective retailers what their bonus checks were in this manner consistent with LuLaRoe policy? No. Why not? Because it has to be backed up with hard work and everybody's different. Out of Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's... Um, work ethics are different it just depends on what you choose to do and how hard you choose to grow it if tiffany had told a prospective retailer in person face to face that story that we just watched in the last segment would that have been okay with you i don't know why don't you know no it would have been okay with me Because that's her story. I don't know what anybody else's story is. Okay, let's see. So now we're looking at uh, exhibit 137, which for the record is Bates number WA-AG-000940 and is a printout from YouTube page for LuLaRoe Meg Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Meg Hutchinson is? Yes. Who is Meg? A retailer. Is she a current retailer? Yes. And what is her current rank? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. And here, um, well, I'm going to go next to the actual video, so I'm going to enter this. Are we done with this one? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. so exhibit 138 is going to be the video that goes okay. with 137. Okay. And for the record, this video is Bates numbered WA-AG-000938. And let me cue this up. I'm gonna play this video. And for the record, I'm starting at the very beginning. Sorry, I have really bad heartburn. I'm gonna take Would a like quick break. Just uh, yeah. I mean, I, well, no, go ahead. Show this, and I'll do it later. Okay. I'll find some tums. Starting with uh, at the very beginning. Okay. 
Again, I've never seen this, so. Hey there, we will have Meg again, and today I wanted to talk about what does it mean to sell these clothes, to onboard with LuLaRoe. Um, okay, it means a couple things. The first thing it means is you're going to be a part of this amazing business, and you're going to run your own business out of your home. And so you need to be prepared for that, that it's not just this fun thing that you're going to do, although it's fun, but it's a business opportunity. And so you're going to be selling this clothing. This clothing. You're going to um, schedule pop-ups and go to your friends' houses and take all this in your car and sell it there. Or you could do online sales or you could do Periscope sales. So just be ready to know this is a business opportunity for you. Unlike any other, you can do it from the comfort of your home, with your kids around, um, in your friends' homes, things like that. It's really flexible in that way. does it cost? What is this going to cost me to buy an entire boutique of clothes? So the owner, Deanne, set it up where you will begin with 300 items. So you'll have from extra, extra small all the way up to triple extra large. So literally any person under the sun can come and fall in love with at your first boutique. So for those 300 items, it's going to cost around $5,000 to $6,000. <gasps> Which is a lot of money. And I remember a year ago, that almost kept us from joining because we just don't spend that kind of money. And so I understand and can totally empathize with uh, the price being so high. So what that means, though, I like to break that down. What the price means is that you have 300 items and you've spent around five to $6,000. So really, you buy them at half price and you go sell them for full price. And so you could turn around and make double what you paid back. Um, so the average person pays off their debt in two to three months. That's an average in Lularo. We have a very high retention rate because people fall in love with the product and want to keep shopping. And so, um, so that's sort of how much it costs and how quickly you can pay it off. Okay, so let's talk numbers. For a live pop-up, um, it's going to be about four hours of work. So an hour and a half pop-up and then a setup and the breakdown and the driving and all of that. So you'll be gone from home for about four hours. And um, the average pop-up sells around 30 items. And the average item has a profit of $20. And so for a pop-up where you're gone, for four hours, you're going to profit around $600. Profit. Go home. $600 in your pocket. So that's amazing, right? For four hours of work. And then an online sale is a totally different beast. Many more hours of work but you can make a lot more money. And so I would say you could probably double those numbers, if not triple or quadruple. And on our team, on my team, which is called the Tribe, um, there's lots of different teams in LuLaRoe, but on my team, we do a great job at online sales in particular. Um, and so a lot of girls are averaging 70 item online sales or 100 item online sales. And so you can just do the numbers to see how much would that profit be for 100 items times 20, $20 an item. So you're in profit thousands for sales. So um, it's just a matter of what brings you more joy or which one you're more attracted to. So that's sort of the pop-up profit versus the online profit. There's also another aspect of Lula Row, which is the team shift. So sort of accidentally, a lot of people will start building teams where your friends might see you or even strangers on your Facebook shopping page might see your sales and realize they would like to be in on this too. And so... Um, you could start a team, and you're going to make some great money on your team. Again, I started a year ago, and my last team check last month was for $31,000. And so never in a million years did I dream that this little thing that I thought would be a hobby and bring in about $1,500 a month would turn into this insane salary almost immediately. <laughs> I would just say, if this is something that has uh, been in your brain or that's getting your heart to beat fast, you should contact me. It doesn't matter how you contact me. Just message me on Facebook. Um, it's shop Meg, or you can email me. Um, just reach out to me in some way because this is a huge, huge business opportunity, and I would love to get you rolling. Okay, so you haven't seen that video before. No. Um is it okay with you for a LuLaRoe retailer to post a video like this on YouTube? Check to the phone. Okay. 
We already discussed that. No. No? And is that because it's on YouTube? That we, yes. Like we discussed earlier? Yes. Okay. If Meg had had the same conversation she just had there on, on video, but in person, face to face, would that have been okay with you? I believe so. So in the video, she mentioned an av average retailer pays off their debt from the buy-in in two to three months. Does that sound accurate to you? Yes. If they're working their business and they're doing all the things that they are suggested to do and their sales are what she's saying, incredibly doable. And she mentions uh, a bonus check in, in her first few months of $31,000. I would not have agreed for her to tell that. Why not? Because I think people need to get started and see where the money and their ability to do that first. And then if they have people that want to join their team, then they can say, well, let me show you what the compensation plan is about. Okay. Um, we talked, we mentioned uh, just a little bit ago, we saw that the hashtag um, hashtag because of LuLaRoe. We talked a little bit about that. About that. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Is that a phrase you've ever used? Ooh, I don't recall. Okay. Um, I want to... Real quick before we go to that, um, we, we talked a lot in the last half an hour or so about the YouTube videos and, and your concerns with YouTube videos. Do you have similar concerns with other social media or is there something in particular about posting a video on YouTube? I don't know. I don't know other social medias. Do you have concerns with um, LuLaRoe retailers using you know, Instagram or a Facebook post, but not video to try to uh, recruit people for their downline? I have no idea. I would have to see the video. I don't encourage it. None. Hannah Wisman marked as Exhibit 138, which is an... 139. Oh, sorry. 139. <clears throat> so Exhibit 139 is Bates numbered LLR-WA-0002094, which is an email um, from Ben Ward dated February 27, 2018, attaching a transcript from yesterday's Coach's Mentor webinar. And then we're going to move to that transcript, which mm -hmm. is the next page. And I know you, you said My yesterday empty. that you, that you uh, don't regularly review these transcripts, but you're aware they're made. Yes. OK. So looking at the um, first page of the actual transcript, which is base number 20947. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's an intro which is not identified who, um, who the speaker is, and then the second full paragraph says Deanne, and then it looks like comments from you. Do you see that? Yep. Okay. And then the next paragraph continues, which looks like it also continues from you. Um, starting with, so it's something I want to put on this bucket list of amazing things I want you to think about because of LuLaRoe. Do you see that? Oh, wait, where are you at? I'm sorry. Oh, down at the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you could um, read so that I don't, to the bottom. I don't know who put quotes there. Okay. She, somebody did. <laughs> I so, 
So if you could read starting, so it's something that, all the way to the bottom of the page out loud, please. So I'm just going to note again that this is in rough draft format. It's not represented as verbatim. Um, I'd also, frankly, object to having her read a long document into the record. That's all. If you could go ahead and read. It's just a waste of time. It really is. Go ahead and read it. Which So hashtag is something that's used on social media? Yes. And have you ever used the hashtag because of LuLaRoe on social media? I have no idea. I'm sure I have. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 140, which is Bates number WA-AG-005779. And um, it's a screenshot from your Instagram page. Does that look accurate? Yes. OK. And in, in it, there's a photo of a sunset. And is that, is that a photo you took? Yes. OK. And then um, the, there's a posting along with the photo from you that says sunset, sunset across the Pacific Ocean here off San Diego, hashtag LuLaRoe, hashtag because of LuLaRoe. Does that refresh your recollection that you've used the hashtag because of LuLaRoe? Yes. And what did you mean by posting it here? I don't know. <coughs> um, when you posted it, were you aware that uh, LuLaRoe retailers were also using the hashtag because of LuLaRoe? Yes. I'm sure I did. I didn't start this, I don't think. But it's fun. Are you okay with the hashtag because of LuLaRoe? Yes. Why are you okay with it? Because it's amazing. It's hard work. If you're posting great things from the benefits of all you do every day, why not post because of LuLaRoe? If you're working your business and you're benefiting from it. Um, okay, you can put that. Um, handed what's been marked as Exhibit 141. Which is uh, an email Bates numbered LLR-WA-00007422. And there's an email from Megan Alvarez to Kenny at LuLaRoe. And the subject is Facebook post. Have you seen this before? I don't know. And you're not on it, um, just to be clear. Um, and Kenny is Kenny Brady. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. OK. Um, and it says, hi, Kenny. Deanne would like you to post this on Facebook. These are, it says, tree separate events. Um, let me know if you need anything from me. Um, and then it attaches on, on the back is a post that starts with hello, ladies, and it ends with Deanne. Is that something that you asked to be posted on Facebook? Probably. 
And is that on the LuLaRoe Facebook account or your personal Facebook account? I don't account? know. Probably LuLaRoe's. Who is Megan Alvarez? She is an office assistant. Was she your assistant at the time? No. Is she still with the LuLaRoe? Yes. Okay, you can put that aside. <clears throat> I think I think it's a good time for a quick break. So you can go off the record. Off the record, the time is 4:31 p.m. So do you have a team time on site? Uh. Going back on the record, the time is 4:43 p.m. This morning, um, I think it was this morning, we were uh, talking about the bonus program. And I think you mo mentioned that it was created to take some of the pressure off of you. Is that right? Yes. Um, and that's pressure to do trainings? Yes. OK. Um, would you say that managing a team is hard work? Yes. Um, have you ever talked about capping a down, um, someone's downline? Putting a maximum number of people who could be in someone's downline? Not that I recall. Why not? I just haven't. When you created the leadership bonus program, why uh, did you decide to create that program separate and apart from the sales aspect of LuLaRoe? I did not create the bonus program. You were involved in it, correct? Nope. Um, okay. You've been handed Exhibit 142, which is a document labeled Bates number 003898, um, and it's titled Leadership Bonus Pro Plan and dated Thursday, June 1st, 2017. Have you seen this document before? No. In the document, it looks like a, an announcement of a new sales-based leadership bonus plan, which is how it's characterized in that first line of the email. Are you aware that uh, LuLaRoe changed uh, its bonus plan in June of 2017? Yes. What was the change? That my understanding is that it would be based on sales versus ordering. And why did LuLaRoe make that change? I do not know. Why didn't LuLaRoe make that change earlier? I do not know. Whose idea was it to make the change? I do not know. Did anyone ask for your approval of the change? No. Did you approve of the change? I am sure I did somewhere, but I don't recall. When there was a change, did you um, have any expectation of the impact that it would have on retailers? No. Um, and you could put that one aside. Have you ever handed out uh, bonus checks to retailers personally? Yes. How often do you do that? 
I haven't done that for four years. Was it something that you did frequently before four years ago? In the beginning, yes. And why did you do it? Because it was fun. How it was? How was it fun? Oh, it's just wonderful to give them a hug and tell them how awesome they are. When you handed out checks personally, where did you do that? It depended on the circumstance. Did you ever ask um, LuLaRoe to come to, or sorry, strike that. Did you ever ask retailers to come to your office to pick up their checks? No. When you handed out checks personally to LuLaRoe retailers, did you take pictures with them with their checks? No. Did you take pictures of them with their checks? No. <coughs> Have you ever uh, held a retailer's checks due to their behavior? No. Have you ever held a retailer's checks due to a violation of LuLaRoe policy? Me? No. I've never. Has LuLaRoe ever? I'm sure you'd have to ask legal. Have you ever told a retailer that they need to come to convention to pick up their check? No. Have you ever called a retailer to tell them how big their check would be that month? Yes. And was that on the phone or FaceTime? Could be both. Have you ever called a retailer to tell them how big their checks would be while others were listening? I have no idea. Or have you ever done that where others were in the room with you? No. How often do you call retailers to help tell them how big their bonus checks would be? I haven't done that in three years. Before you stop doing that, how often would you do it? I don't know. Why would you do it? Because it's exciting and rewarding and a wonderful congratulations for all their hard work. Have you ever posted bonus checks to social media? You asked that question before. No. handed what's been marked as uh, Exhibit 143, which is a screenshot of your Instagram page um, and is Bates number WA-AG-005772. Is this a post that you made to your Instagram page? Yes. Okay, and in it, there's a photo um, of a woman with um, some checks in front of her. Is that you? Yes. Okay. Um, and are those bonus checks that are in front of you? I don't know. Why did you po post this? Why not? So actually, let me back up. In, in the message that you wrote, you, you wrote, woot woot, yahoo, look what I get to do now. Yes, I'm signing big bonus checks. Does that indicate that the checks you're signing in this photo are bonus checks? Yes. Okay. So why did you post yourself signing bonus checks on your Instagram page? I don't know why. Do you have a date on these? 2014, it looks like. Yep. A long time ago. But does this re refresh your recollection that you have posted bonus checks on social media? Oh, I didn't post bonus checks anywhere. You posted your, a picture of yourself yeah, signing bonus checks. Yeah, but there's no names anywhere. It doesn't know who it is. It doesn't say who it is for. Okay. Um,
we've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 144, which is Bates numbered WA-AG-005773, which is another uh, printout or screenshot from your Instagram account. Um, and here it looks like a photo um, posted. Did you post this photo? I don't know. Um, and Does it say I posted? This is a, I'll represent to you that this is a screenshot from your Instagram account. It says Deanne following. Yes, that's because the person who, who printed this was following you. Okay. I'll represent that to you. Okay. So this is a, a screenshot from your Instagram account. Does this refresh, <coughs> refresh your recollection of posting additional bonus checks on your Instagram account? Check to the point. Go ahead. I don't know what these checks are. You don't know whether these are bonus checks or some other checks? No. Why did you post these on Instagram? I don't just shows lots of wonderful checks. Okay, put that one aside. So you've now been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 145 which is a screenshot from your Instagram account. Bates number WA-AG-005774. And in it is a, another photo of um, a series of checks. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you wrote, okay, 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 yippee. Look what I'm signing right now. I'm so excited to give most of these bonus checks out in my office tomorrow at Leadership. Did you post this? Yes. Why, and so the checks depicted in the image are bonus checks? I guess. Well, in, in the message that you posted, you said, I'm excited to give most of these bonus mm -hmm. checks. Does that indicate to you that they're bonus checks in the photo? Yes. Okay. Um, and why did you post this picture of all these bonus checks? Because it's fun and exciting to see the reward of people that work hard in their businesses. In the photo, the checks are all sort of fanned out so that you can see the amounts. Yeah. Why did you post them that way? I don't know. Was it so that you would be able to see all of the different amounts? No. If I folded them, fold, if I fanned them the other way, you would have seen their names and you would have seen the bank account. So I wouldn't have done it that way. I could have fanned them the other way. Were you trying to convey the, the number of bonus checks you'd be passing out? Oh gosh, this is nothing compared to what. Do you personally sign all bonus checks? No. But you personally were signing these? At the time, yes. In 2000, I believe this was posted in October 2015. Mm -hmm. Were you personally signing all bonus checks then? No. I don't think so. But you were posting on Facebook about signing bonus checks? <coughs> yes. This, this, these, obviously, yes. Why were you signing these checks in particular? I have no idea. They brought them to me and I signed them. You can put that one aside. been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 146, which is Bates numbered WA-AG-005776 and is a, another screenshot of your Instagram account. Does mm -hmm. that look right? Yes. Okay. And this is another image of uh, a series of checks that you posted. Mm -hmm. okay. And in it you wrote, looky, looky, what day it is. And then there's a series of emojis. Um, it's leader bonus check signing day. Maybe you're getting one if you're love, if you've loved and helped someone become a fashion consultant. Did you post that? Yes. Okay. And and again, the checks are fanned out to see, um, at least, uh, sort of see the volume of checks. Did you arrange them that way? I think I just went like this. I didn't arrange them anyway. Okay. Um, and this was another instance where you were signing checks personally. Yes. 
And why did you post it on Instagram? Again, because I like to create excitement. Create excitement for who? For the successes of those that are a part of this amazing company. And I like to show how hard people work. Put that one aside. Uh, you've now been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 147, which is base number WA-AG-005777, and is another screenshot from your Instagram account. Does that look right? Uh -huh. What date is it? And it looks like this is dated November 2014. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and again, you, you posted a picture of a series of checks. Is that right? Yep. And you, um, you posted, uh, woo, guess what I'm doing and what day it is. I can read it. It's leader bonus check day. Is that something you posted? Yes. Okay. You can put that aside. So you've now been, you're being handed what's been marked as Exhibit 148. Okay. which is uh, Bates number WA-AG-005778 and is um, another screenshot from your Instagram account. Is that right? Yeah. And it's another photo of some checks? Yep. Okay. And here the you... The dates are wrong. Well, this one's after this one. They're not intended to be in order. Oh, all right. So looking at this one, which is Exhibit 148, uh -huh. um, you posted, I'm so excited to be signing these big babies, leadership bonus checks. Yes, they're going out today. Hashtag love Luro. Is that something you posted? Yes. Okay. And so again, the, the f checks that you have um, taken a picture of here are bonus checks. Yes. Okay, we can put that aside. So we've seen a, a series of photos that you've posted of signing bonus checks um, for retailers. Have you ever encouraged retailers to post pictures of their bonus checks? Not that I know of. Have you ever seen uh, retailers who posted pictures of their bonus checks online? Not that I can recall. I'm going to hand you what's been previously marked as Exhibit 13. Um, have you ever seen this before? No. Okay, for the record, uh, it's Bates Stamp WA-AG-003359, <coughs> and it is a screenshot from uh, LuLaRoe Lindsay Wheeler's uh, Instagram account, um, and depicts a, a photo um, on the left there, uh, do you recognize the person in the photo? Yes. And who is that? Lindsay Wheeler. It's Lindsay Wheeler, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you recognize the backdrop that she's in front of? Yes. <coughs> Where is that backdrop from? Maybe a back photo op stage place. I don't know exactly where. But do you we're recognize right, it from we're being right a by Disneyland, so it must be something to do with mm -hmm. Disney magic. <coughs> Uh, and uh, in the photo, Lindsay is holding two checks. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the first check um, at the top, it's uh, hard to read, but it looks like it's paid to Lindsay Wheeler in the amount of $10,000. And then um, on the left-hand side of the check, um, where the note usually is in a, in a regular check, it says personal sales. Do you see that? Yes. 
And then in the bottom, there's another check um, that's also paid to Lindsay Wheeler in the amount of $10,000. And the note says pers personal recruit sales. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Yes. Okay. Um, is this okay with you that Lindsay um, posted this? That I didn't even know she did this. I probably liked the picture, but this was an incentive that she earned. It was a contest. What, what do you mean? bonus checks. What do you mean, uh, contest? They're contests that we do and encourage people. I mean, we, we do contests, and she earned, she won the contests from her hard work. So was it a contest for personal sales and personal recruit sales? I do not recall exactly. It says it here, but I would have to go back to whatever the date is, 2016, and recall what the whole contests were in 2016. Were these checks um, that she's holding created by LuLaRoe? Yes. And were they handed out at a LuLaRoe event? No. They were given to her personally. And I'm going to hand you what's been marked as Exhibit 14. Um, which I'll represent to you as a printout of the likes of this post. I told post. you I liked it. Okay. I'm sure I did. Yep. So if you see on the first page, and just for the record, Exhibit yep. 14 is base number WA-AG-0034460. And in the list of likes, the second one is Deanne LuLaRoe, Deanne Stidham. That's you? Yep. Okay. So you did like that post. I like all the posts, posts on my retailers. I don't very often read what they say, but I just look at the picture and scroll down. Okay. I was proud of her. So now I'm going to hand you what's been previously marked as Exhibit 15. And for the record, this is Bates number WA-AG-003358 and is a screen capture of Lindsay Wheeler's uh, Instagram account. Have you seen this before? Um, I probably have. I don't know. I don't recall exactly, but hilarious it, that she took it, took them home. <laughs> and in, in this uh, photo, there's a um, picture, and is that of Lindsay? Yes. Okay. And she's holding two checks. And are those checks that Lulu created? They're the ones in this picture. In the same picture? Yep. I'm sorry, not the same picture. They're the same checks as yes. in yep. the previous one. Same ones. And do you recall if you liked this picture? I'm sure I did. Okay. Just to make sure the record is clear, I'm handing you exhibit okay. 16. Which I'll represent to you is, well, let's see, which is bait stamp WA-AG-003459. Mm -hmm. And I'll represent to you is a, uh, the likes associated with um, Exhibit 15. And in, in the, the third on the list is you, um, Deanne LuLaRoe, Deanne Stidham. Yes. Okay. Um, we saw earlier um, some images from your Instagram account. Uh, do you maintain that account? Mostly. Does anyone else ever post to it? Yes. Who posts to it? I don't know. Various people. Who, who have um, you authorized to post to it? Um, my sons, son-in-laws. Sometimes my assistant has done it before. So which sons have you authorized to post to it? I don't know exactly. Have you authorized Kenny? Yes. Have you authorized Jordan? Yes. Um, and your assistant has posted to it? I don't recall exactly. 
Do any uh, LuLaRoe retailers follow you on Instagram? Oh, I'm sure they do. <coughs> do you know how many followers you have on Instagram? Uh, 92,000. 92,000? Mm hmm So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 149, which for the record is bait stamp WA-AG-005783 and is another screenshot from your Instagram account. Do you recognize this? Um, it looks to be uh, on the left, uh, the photo that was posted to the Instagram account. Um, is a photo of a woman and some text. Is that Lindsay Wheeler? Yes. Okay. And at, at the bottom, the text is heading to the airport. Cannot wait to see you. Just had to share my birthday open house today, 11 to 2, 16,600 in sales. Thank you for making my dreams come true. Is that a text that Lindsay sent you? Oh, I don't know. Uh, is um, How did this come to be on your Instagram account? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, in in the uh, caption to the photo, uh, you wrote, "Isn't at Lindsay Wheel at Lularo Lindsay Wheeler amazing?" And I just had to share this with you. Pop ups are where it's at. Hashtag Lularo Life. Hashtag Lularo Business. Did you write that? That's my comment to her. Are you sure about that? No, and, I'm not. Okay. Is uh, is this something you posted? No, I don't remember. Have you ever taken screenshots of text messages with retailers and posted them on Instagram? I may have, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, if you could put that one aside. Handing you what's been marked as Exhibit 150, which is Bates number WA-AG-005784, which again is a, a screenshot from your Instagram account, Deanne LuLaRoe following. Does this look familiar to you? No, but it's a long time ago. I don't, nothing looks familiar to me that far back. Um, the, the image that was posted on your Instagram uh, is t uh, text and it says, uh, so excited. I have to share. I just finished a pop-up in an area that there's several consultants. There were 15 ladies that has never heard of LLR. I sold 90 pieces, $4,000 and booked 10 parties. So anyone that mentions the word saturation is crazy. Um, and then the, the comment that you posted along with it says, wow, get busy. You just never know. And your confidence will show when you put yourself out there how much you love LuLaRoe. Is that something you posted? Yes. Okay. And where, um, the, the image and the text that is there, where did that come from? I have no idea, obviously. It's a random, I mean, I, I didn't post the person's name or anything. Is it a text it, message that you received? Probably. I would not, I would have to search. Why did you post it? Because it's fun and exciting and 90 pieces and $4,000 for 10 parties. That's amazing. There were 15 ladies that never heard of LuLaRoe. Awesome. Put that one aside. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 151, 
which is Bates number WA-AG-005785 and is another screen capture from your Instagram account. Um, and here is another um, image that consists of words starting saying, Deanne, I wanted to let you know that I've been an active LuLaRoe fashion consultant now for 11 days and I've made over $7,000 with live sales, with just with live sales and one lunch party, and then it goes on. Um, and then the, the comment from you, Deanne LuLaRoe, says, this is how it's done. Get back to basics, all you amazing LuLaRoe fashion consultants, and book your live pop-ups now. This business was created for real in-person to person connections. How many do you have booked for September? Yes. Is that something you posted? Yes. Okay. Where did the um, image of the words that you posted come from? I have no idea. Was it Probably. from a text message from a LuLaRoe retailer? There, I'm sure. Yep. Do you recall which one? No. Nope. Why did you post this? Because it's amazing. It's, it's somebody's real words. Consoled now for 11 days and have made over 7,000. That is amazing. And doable because that's exactly what I did. Some people did that in two days. Put that one aside. So you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 152, which is Bates number WA-AG-005786, and it's another screen capture from your Instagram account. Mm -hmm. And in it, it, the image that's posted uh, looks to be a text message chat, perhaps a screenshot. Does that look right? Um, and then um, posted along with it, you wrote, so the challenge begins, what did you do this last week and your live in-home pop-ups. I challenge you all to do a live pop-up this week and report back to, to me. Did you post that? Yes. Okay. And did you post this um, image of a text chat? Yes. And at the top of the text chat, it, text chat, it says Lindsay. Is that Lindsay Wheeler? Yes. Okay. Why did you post it? Because it's amazing. Did you post she it works, as an, She works really hard. Did you post it as an example of what um, Possibility, what the possibilities are. Okay. Um, let me put that one aside. You've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit 153, which is Bates number WA-AG-005787 which again is a screenshot of an Instagram um, post from your Instagram account. Do you recognize this? No. It looks to be another uh, screenshot of a, a text chat along with the comment by you, Deanne Lulabro. How many pop-ups do you have booked? It's time to get busy doing as much as you can because preschool and pre-holiday selling S already here. Um, did you post that? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, is this a is the image that you posted a screenshot of a text chat with a LuLaRoe retailer? I don't know. It looks like it is. Why did you post it? Again, inspiring people. We have 25 pop-ups for next month. That's amazing. That's what I would have done. Except for I would have done 25 a week. Um, okay, you can put that one aside. Okay. handing you what's been previously marked as Exhibit 18. And for the record, this is bait stamp LLR-WA-0004274.
and is a um, printout of a text chat from your iPhone dated March 26, 2018. Do you recognize this? Mm -hmm. um, and in this text chat, it looks like uh, the participants, there's six participants. The first one is Kenny. Is that Kenny Brady? Yes. Okay. And then uh, the remaining participants, are those all LuLaRoe uh, retailers? Yes. Okay. And what did you mean by that? They need to sell. Their, nobody wants to sit on merchandise. If they sit on merchandise, they're not making money. That's not fun. It doesn't give them the ability to see success. And, and this was sent in September 2017, correct? Yes. Okay. LuLaRoe had just changed its bonus structure in uh, June of 2017, right? Mm, I thought you said July. I don't know. It yeah. was earlier in the yes. summer? Yes. Okay. I think about a female and their husband or spouse. If they're buying product, I want to see them see success and sell it through. Because when they are succeeding, it makes life less stressful. At this time in September 2017, did LuLaRoe have the ability to tell uh, how much of the product a retailer had purchased wholesale had actually been sold? I, I don't recall. I have no idea of knowing that. I don't do that. Um, let's see. I'll talk a little bit about LuLaRoe's return policy. You can put that one aside. Uh, currently, what is LuLaRoe's policy with respect to returns of merchandise from retailers? You know, that's something Mark takes care of. I don't do that. And that policy has fluctuated over the years, is that right? Kind of. How has it fluctuated? Mm, I think at one time we had one buyback, and, and then the most recent I, that I recall is a 90% uh, buyback. And is that the current policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did anyone at LuLaRoe ever tell retailers that um, they would have a 100% buyback policy guaranteed? I don't know exactly. Yeah. Have you ever been involved in any decision to change the return policy? No. That's Mark? Yes. Who else was involved in that decision? I have no idea. Handed what's been marked as Exhibit 154, <coughs> which for the record is Pix numbered LLR WA 00042666, and as a record from a uh, text chat from your phone dated May 10th, 2017. Does that look right? Yes. Okay, and does this text ch chat look familiar to you? No. You mentioned I, the term upsell a couple times today. What does that mean? Well, when you go to McDonald's, you're at the drive through they always ask you, hey, do you want dessert with that meal? Could we add fries to it? Just that. Sometimes people 
you know, when you go shopping, you go buy a pair of pants and you think, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have something to wear with this. And so then you have to go to a complete different section, find a shirt. The beauty of LuLaRoe is that if they've got st stuff in, a, in their merchandise, they can, oh, let's see, I can put this, goes with this, mm -hmm. this skirt goes with this shirt, and I've, I've got a jacket I can offer. When I'm shopping, I want somebody to just put the outfit together. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I used to go to various shops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Were you intending to uh, encour encourage the retailers to encourage their downlines to place more orders of merchandise from LuLaRoe? Only if they need it. Um, and it, you, um, there's a reference to waiting for the launch and then later it says, um, we don't know the date we're going to do the lunch. The Is that launch. second one should be launched? Probably. Okay. And what launch was that? I don't know. We, we launch new product all the time, new styles all the time. I have no idea. This is from 2017. Wow, that's almost three years ago. Okay, you can put that one aside. what's been marked as Exhibit 155, um, which is base numbered LOR-WA-0004981. And there's an email from someone named Kimber Laws to Deanne at lularoe.com dated June 9th, 2018. So this is an email to you? Yes. Okay. And have you seen it before? No. Nope. Do you recognize it? No. Nope. Oh. Um, do you recall getting an email from Kimber Laws? Mm, I don't recall it. Mm -mm. Who is Kimber Laws? I don't know. Is she a retailer? I would have to go and look. I have no idea. Look, Looking at uh, the message that she sent to you, does that indicate to you that she is a retailer? Was. Or that she was a retailer at uh -huh. the time? Uh-huh. Did you respond to this email? Mm, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know. Or I probably forwarded it off over to the return department to say, please look into this. So in the email, um, she's, she's conveying to you um, that she's been with LuLaRoe for a few years, um, but has had no success or help from her sponsors. Uh, do you sometimes get emails from retailers who are struggling? Yes. And what do you do when you get emails from retailers I who are struggling? I forward them to people that, please, can you take care of this? Who do you forward to? Mm, it depends on the department, it depends on the situation. It doesn't surprise me that her sponsor, Sarah Gibbons, Sarah Gibbons sold $500,000 a month and didn't care about anybody but herself. And she therefore left the company because Sarah wanted to do other things. I know you don't know who Sarah is. So you said her sponsor was Sarah Gibbons. What um, what rank was Sarah Gibbons when she left the company? I don't know. I think she was only a sponsor. Had, have you ever personally spoken with Sarah Gibbons? Um, randomly. When did you speak with her? I saw her in Las Vegas at a marketing show two years ago. Was that a LuLaRoe show? No. She's, a, she hasn't been in LuLaRoe for years. So that was after she left LuLaRoe? Yes. In fact, Sarah was, I, I don't think Sarah was even in during this time. I'd have to look and see. Okay, you can put that down. Um, okay. I think we're 
Uh, we can go off the record. Off the record, the time is 5.34 p.m. I think we're about 20 minutes. I probably won't take